Why would you tell me that? Why would you yeah. invite me onto a Zoom call to tell me that? <laughs> Disgusting. This could have been an email. <laughs> this really could have been an email. <laughs> Theme music. Theme music. I had to, That's... I was holding Welcome Back to Glee Boot in. I was like, oh. uh huh. Yeah. Yep. We're returning to our Glodcaster roots today, but uh, <laughs> welcome back to Not My Fantasy, the show where we talk about fantasy films and the lore that inspired them. I'm Cullen. And I'm Hannah. And today we have uh, a longtime podcasting friend and uh, host of the Iconic Glee podcast, Gleek of the Week, Andrew McGuire. Oh my God. I am so excited to see you all again. It has been like, I think this is a three year long relationship now. I, so. I feel yeah. crazy to me. Wild. But oh my God. Great company. Great um conversation point today. Lots <laughs> oh, to discuss yeah. about so this, discuss. this film. You know what's funny is, you know, my boyfriend's was through the whole Glee Boot journey. And so I was watching this movie, which we'll, re- mm-hmm. we'll reveal. And he was like, what are you watching? Glee? I was like, oh, God, no. You but would it's think. very similar. He was <laughs> right. literally like, could have fooled me. So it does feel very much like we are coming back to those Glee Boot roots. Yeah, Wait, it is what would, I don't even recall like and not to like fully like go behind the curtain of like production yeah. and everything but like what was okay wait you messaged a while ago to have me on for this cinderella episode so right? yeah so we actually started re- cinderella was planned the cinderella series was planned for my 29th birthday because i was having a cinderella themed birthday party um oh, I love. <laughs> for august and september we recorded in july cinderella 1950 animated classic and the Rodgers and Hammerstein Brandy Cinderella, another iconic movie. Uh, and then the strike, the strike like guidelines for that's the SAG strike were announced. Mm-hmm. And they we're kind of like, okay, what do we do? We had already scheduled Brandy, we had recorded animated, we were scheduled Brandy, and so we just went ahead and recorded the one we had scheduled for Brandy, and then they've just been in the library uh waiting. waiting. So it's like yeah. the our listeners have will just be in March after Supernatural Romance Month. We'll be in Cinderella, but then this is us coming back to Cinderella after like six months. Oh yeah. my god, the Cinderella era. Yes. yes. Our Cinderella era, you know, it had a, it had kind of uh almost like a Taylor Swift thing where you know a protest uh, an era cut short, you know, by a by a scooter man, you know. Right. Like, so now we're coming back and exploring the history of that bitch, the most iconic princess, the girl that wears the glass slipper that shakes the folktale world. Yeah. She constantly does. She reimag- reimagines the story. And like how many, like it's every like five years, I feel, right? Yeah. Like the thing is, yeah, we're doing five Cinderella movies and mm-hmm. we'll have barely scratched the surface. We could do a f- another yeah. full Cinderella series because like we're not going to get to Ever After or Ella Enchanted. Mm-hmm. And then I think we decided that the, like, the Cinderella story franchise like that is outside of our scope because it's not fantasy. Uh-huh. Um, not, there's no magic. It's... There's nothing. Yeah. yeah. But there's a, still like a bunch of interesting European ones and like weird deep cuts. There's yeah. into the woods, you know? So like mm-hmm. this will... Not be the last time she comes up. I apologize for asking because this is obviously familiar territory for everybody out, the listeners. But why is Cinderella so imperative and important to you as a so, story? Oh, so, Cin- yeah. okay. So, yeah, this is a refresh for if you haven't listened to the animated one. So, Cinderella, you know, was being read to my, by my siblings, to my siblings, by my aunt, basically while I was being born. Uh, they, they, my mom was in the hospital. My aunt was watching my brother and sister at home. 
Uh, I, I was homeschooled, but it wasn't that weird of a birth. Oh, so <laughs> I just want to clarify, I wasn't like born in a, no, nothing wrong if you're born in a bathroom. You were stuff. able to Come watch up. Disney movies. I was, I was. Yeah. And so my, right. which was a little controversial sometimes, but, uh, and then like my mom picked Cinderella out at a garage sale, like the VHS. And like, I held it as a baby and just like, wouldn't let go. So basically like, as long as I could remember being alive, I was like this Cinderella animated, like that's my movie. <laughs> Okay. And then I like went through the boyhood thing of like, okay, don't like girly things anymore. And then right, 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 right. I had a an embarrassingly supernatural awakening experience or spiritual, not supernatural experience. Super- I was like, okay, wait. When, <laughs> I, when I went to Disney World for the first time, I'm going to Disneyland this weekend. So that's exciting. But uh, Disney World and the bubbles were coming out and they're playing the song from Cinderella and it like, the dream is what your heart makes it like reset like a part of my personality right. that was dormant and i actually did my senior thesis in college on cinderella i'd ever written a cinderella musical um oh my god yeah so i just i think something about the underdog nature and the triumphing against all odds right that, like and like essentially like triumphing over like trauma and abuse even though like mm-hmm. that necessarily wasn't like like I had a loving family, right? But like that kind of like your like no one expects anything from you. Um, but like through just like sheer willpower, you find a way out, you know? Yeah. And you have that like that uh moment where everything switches and it's just like such a relief. And like that to me is the fantasy of it. Like, I mean, all the aesthetics of it are great too, but like that moment where it's just like everything's so down and yeah. it's like but like all that work you put into it like pays off and that like being kind pays off even when you know other people don't always see it that way and the world doesn't always work that way and that right. kind of that ties into something I wanted to explore in this part of our Cinderella series and in general is what is Cinderella about as a story so we have in watching the animated and the brandy one those are very much stories about dreaming and stories about kindness yeah. Uh, very classic. I think the Disney one's a little more sinister in like the world she inhabits as Hannah. Oh, implied. it's crazy. Like it's it's very oh, dark. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the Hammerstein, Rodgers and Hammerstein, the Brandy one is a lot more of a sweet story. Yeah. Um, and then so we explored like Charles Perrault's Cinderella, which is like the one everyone adapts. That's what this movie is based off of. Mm-hmm. And uh, Finette Cendron, which is a Cinderella written by a woman from the same time period. And then we went back to the early roots with the Egyptian kind of like blip or the Greco-Egyptian story of Rodophis or Rodophis and then Yishen in China, in 8th century China, which is like a Cinderella. Like you're like, okay, that seems like Cinderella. Um, And we're actually going to explore kind of how Cinderella maybe made its way into Europe uh, today. But this is all to talk about... uh, a this movie's cultural impact may, may think, not be on the same level, but the... no, I think that this is the Cinderella story that people think of when they think of Cinderella. I think this <laughs> is like name recognition. Absolutely, like that's that's everybody's. There's like a lot of conversation about like not my Ariel, but this is my Cinderella. Everybody, this is the people Cinderella. The people Cinderella. We're yeah. talking about Camila Cabello starring we... Cinderella. 2021 right we've talked about vanessa hudgens as the the queen of christmas but we talked about the the queen of christmas right 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 right, right, right. yeah yeah uh, um this just in i just got a news report lily james has just been found dead in a ditch oh Oh, no i love her (laughs) all right so uh this movie it came out in 2021 and i saw it when it came out because i'm like i gotta see it uh, I was wildly depressed at the time. I associated with that era of my life because, like, it was on all the sure. billboards, like, haunting me on my commute from the job I hated. Uh, and it made me so mad that I, I I adapted both the musicals I had written into screenplays. Oh. Because wow. I was like, that, so that's really, I know, like, the Sleeping Beauty, like, Briar Rose, I was like, oh, it's, you know, the 10-year anniversary from when we, like, put it on. But I, mm-hmm. But it was also because, like, I saw this movie and was like, I There's a better, better way out there. Um, what's your both experience with this movie? I know, Andrew, you're, you're a fan, right? Okay, so 
I don't. What did I relay to you? I like. You I don't even recall you, what I even said. I think you just <laughs> said like, "Oh, I love that movie," or okay. something like that. <laughs> so I thought that I did. I was like, okay. So I similarly to you, Colin. I watched it at a very dark period of my life. That I feel like just like watching it, I was like, oh, just like it was like I liked it. I was like, this is a good movie. I don't yeah. know. I just feel. I don't want to like be such a bore this entire episode, but like, I'm like, I feel very conflicted about it. I I feel like I have a very complicated relationship with this, this movie that I've yet to really untangle. You know what I mean? I love that. That Yeah. I I, I like the music. I like like the cast. It's all intriguing. The plot is like wild. Um, And I don't know. At the end of it, I was like, that was that was the movie i got it <laughs> yeah i you know? i mean i i do actually like i kind of enjoy listening to parts of the soundtrack some of these songs are bops soundtrack so it's like is I, the best part yeah i it's like there's part things that i hate and things that i enjoy and so it's like to just i i don't like to make content that's just like this is trash i mean you know we did pinocchio a true story with Polly shore so there are movies where i don't feel bad yeah. because there's no one's passion project you know right <laughs> but there's things to enjoy in this movie. But Hannah, what's your experience with it? This is my first time watching it. And I, in my Glee Boot Roots, I was like, can I fast forward through the music numbers? Which I did sometimes. Really? Yeah, wait, okay, season wait, can five we, of Glee. Can we, no, can we name names with the songs in this movie? What What were the songs that yeah. didn't land for you? Um... It's funny. I can't even remember a single song. Um, <laughs> right. I right. thought um, the Billy Porter song was too long. And I was like, I went to check. I was like, okay, how long do I have left this movie? And I was like, oh my God, what? So yeah, yeah that was my response. I think actually, gosh, it was her I Want song. And then I clicked. I was like, okay, how much is left? And I was like, I still have an hour and like 25 minutes left or more than that. Listen. I... <laughs> So you would long. think you would think this movie would be a cute 90, maybe even 95 right? minutes. But for it to be two hours, I guess that's Too the much. musical numbers, right? I mean, that is 40, no, almost 40 that is minutes more than the animated Cinderella. An egregious amount of Cinderella. James Corden is what it is. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But we that's can't blame it, it all on James Corden. I think we can get into it. But there is, I think there's, there is blame to share yeah. for yes. this movie. I think the edit was really weird. Um, yes. <laughs> I think they could have just trimmed it up. They could have trimmed it up to a, a cool 95 minutes, like you said. Yeah. And it yeah. would have been fine. I just. The focus I, the was. Pacing was weird. Pacing and focus. Focus was pulled in a lot of different ways. Yeah. I think what I, where I would love this is as a stage play with people I knew playing the parts. I like literally said it was like, this was produced theme. by a high school. Yeah, like that well, would be wait. fun. Like I'd go and be like, no notes, I had a great time. Colin, I'm curious to to hear if you, I did you see Bad Cinderella? What, do you have any opinions on the not. show? I did not. I actually tried to listen to the soundtrack and I was like, mm-mm, no. Oh, Sorry. I don't think I that, you can't just like raw dog the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. I no. when I went to see Bad Cinderella, maybe the the most intoxicated I've ever been at a, a at a Broadway show, and Hi. also it's like, it was like at a big ass theater too, and maybe like twenty percent of the theater was filled. It was crazy, and it was like on a Thursday night. Like it's like a yeah. kind of it's kind of night, night for theater. Yeah, yeah, it's a night. Yeah. Um, and I was just looking around, and I was like completely like whoa. I was zooted, and I was having a good time. But um, yeah, I I yeah. I don't know. It, it mean, didn't last for a reason. I'm not an Andrew Lloyd Webber fan, mm-hmm. and I felt like his version of the story, like so already, like I'm not like fan, I kind of I guess I like Joseph. I like Joseph. Uh, but I'm not like a fan to a fan. So I already going in, it felt like very dated, and yeah. like it could have done something interesting and didn't. And I think you know something with Cinderella as a story that's retold so many times is. It's weird for me to say this because, like, I love telling the story, but it's like you really do have to find something er- like very original to do with mm-hmm. it. 
And I think like, whoa, like what if the queen sang a song about how fuckable one of her sons is, you know, like, I don't know if that's enough. And, but I would much rather listen to this soundtrack than Bad Cinderella. I feel like that one missed the mark of what Cinderella is about even further. Well, as much as I want to be all like on like this soapbox of like, this movie should have been 95 minutes and no longer. I feel as though if it was 95 minutes, then we would have cut out, and maybe this is getting ahead of myself, the best part of the movie, this mashup of What a Man and Seven Nation Army. That is a a hot take. I was like, wow. Wait, okay, wait. Do we have some some hater in the chat? (laughs) I would have loved to see that on stage. I think that would be so fun. Sure, sure. On Um, stage, yeah. yeah. So the so the background of this movie, so it was by Sony Pictures, bought and distributed by Amazon, produced by James Corden. It was his idea. Um, You're kidding. Yeah. So we, I mean, we could. It doesn't shock me though. It doesn't right shock me, but like, wow. He famously <laughs> blocked LA traffic to do a crosswalk musical. I remember that. Of this, and, he, and he, they all got loud. Yeah, and I yes, and you know, if you've been in LA traffic. That is the worst thing that could happen to you. Uh, he he pitched it to Kay Cannon, who is a writer on shows like New Girl and 30 Rock, uh, 2017's Girl Boss. So when people Pitch call perfect. this Girl Boss Cinderella, yeah, Pitch Perfect. Her directorial debut is the movie Blockers. Which is oh. a great movie. Yeah. So it's, I haven't seen. She's made it's, iconic, it's amazing, yes. beloved material. Um, she's also ex-wife of Jason Sudeikis. Yes. Right? Yeah. And like, I feel like they're on, are they on bad terms? Why do I feel like they're not like cordial? Do we know anything about this? Huh. I, I did don't. not know that. I don't. I knew that she was, she was in researching for this episode. I saw okay. that. I was like, oh. Oh. Um, Interesting. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so she said that she didn't really like fairy tales. And I'm like, wow. Okay. Clicking, mm. clicking, clicking, clicking. Uh, and mm. she's like, I don't really like fairy tales. To me, it's just a bunch of women being mean to each other. And uh, wow, he was like, yeah, but you can modernize it and you can do modern songs. And she's like, mm-hmm. mm, I love that. What a, what a concept. What a concept. Yeah. Jukebox musical, original idea. Uh, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> so this is the first Jukebox musical. Uh, it's ri- written and directed by Kay Cannon. So she wrote and directed uh, it stars... Wait, he pitched the idea of jukebox musical Cinderella. That was his job on this. Yeah. God. Yeah. That's so annoying. Okay. Uh, so this stars. <laughs> you may know her from the iconic. I will be taking no notes on that. Uh, Trolls three getting the band back together. Uh, Camila Cabello. Oh, I'm gonna say that's not where I know her from. Um, I know or... her from that crazy girl group. <laughs> Right, right, right. Uh, and uh, she plays Cinderella along with gay icon. It's very rare for a straight man to be considered a gay icon. Uh, Nicholas uh he played gay in Red, White, and Royal Blue. Uh, he played a bisexual himbo-coded character in Bottoms. He played gay in Handsome Devil. He played a Republican in Purple Hearts. And these are his character Hearts. names. Yes. Gay, no, these are bisexual yes. himbo coded. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. That uh, was what he was auditioning for. I will yeah. say that it was like wild. I don't know if you've ever had this experience of like re watching a movie from like your childhood. I'm not really it's saying that this is from a movie from my childhood per se, <laughs> 2021 Cinderella. But like when you go back and you watch like a movie that you think you remember, but then you see an actor that you really know now and it's like, yes. oh, wow. That movie, that person has always been in this movie and so that was yeah. him in this movie that that he had like this entire career since yeah 2021 yeah. cinderella yeah in the craft legacy he played by a bisexual and in two upcoming movies he's playing a harry styles coded character in the idea of you across from anne hathaway and oh. uh he's playing a bisexual lover in mary and george a british period drama Okay. So he a he'd be working. B very gay. Gay coded. icon. He's a yeah. gay icon. He'd be, he'd be taking roles. He'd be we taking can also roles. say that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I was watching this movie, and my husband came in and was like, "He looks gay." <laughs> Just like first. Wait. And so we like, yeah. he 
And I, this is none of our business, truly. But I'm, is he? He's straight, I believe. He I is. believe that's okay. Yeah, that's what he until and, proven. Yeah, even that's... a lick of bye. Yeah, yeah, because I think we don't we don't want another Kit Connor situation, right? Have people learn right. nothing. Uh, and I think that this podcast might actually be what really teeters it over the edge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Has he ever also, confirmed if the is the Reddit Ella influencers mark? Uh, he says he's straight. He said it on a podcast, so no. Okay, Everything. here was my thing that I was really confused at. I couldn't tell if he was actually British or if his accent was terrible. So that's really interesting. He's British. Mm. He's British, but he's of Russian ar- aristocratic descent. Wait, oh. while we're talking about yes. possibility of being anywhere under the LGBTQ umbrella mm. the, the whole cast of this earring. Movie, every character yeah <laughs> right the earring that he had was mm-hmm. that on the gay ear i st- i ask this all the time but i i simply refuse to acknowledge which one is the gay <laughs> ear i know i don't remember i don't okay, i was like well, that's like such it... a choice not to make y'all research in the middle what of hosting the gay a ear? <laughs> uh that we're on the right ear it's and it's the right ear to be gay. I think yeah. he was it was on his left. I think it was on his left. Yes. Yeah. I mean this character I feel Phew. I feel like <laughs> Dodge that I know. <laughs> Would yeah. hate to be gay. Yeah. Um uh, this stars Billy Billy Porter as Fab G. Uh uh-huh. the light of Straight my icon. life. Yeah, the, <laughs> the light of my life, Mini Driver is Love Queen Beatrice. My mom's celebrity crush, Pierce Brosnan, <laughs> is that. the king. Um, and then starring <clears throat> the wickedly talented Adele w- Kazim. Adele my Kazim. mom's crush, <laughs> Alphaba <laughs> slash Shelby Corcoran slash Maureen slash Nancy slash Elsa, Queen Emeritus of Arendelle, is right. uh, Vivian, the stepmother. Yeah, Vivian. Yeah, to those, those are her. Name. This is her biggest role yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Finally, her big break. <laughs> I'm really grateful to see <laughs> such like an underrepresented actress. Right, you know, right, really right. Thrive. Yeah. Finally, a dynamic role. I have been rooting for this woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, truly. Um, uh, production was delayed because of COVID, and uh, was finished in summer 2020 and released on Amazon in 2021. It was filmed in England, but the castle, because I looked this up, was inspired by French chateaus of the Loire Valley and Versailles, because I was looking at that architecture and I was like, yeah, it's giving it French. Look, I was going to say it didn't look British to me. Yeah, but it's, it's British. Yeah. There's all the like, palm trees. What was going on with that? I don't know. I was confused. Yeah. Um, a fancy British garden. Uh, I guess. I, could, I was going to make a colonialism joke, but I don't want to offend that person that said we need to respect, respect the British more. <laughs> In our wish Ooh. episode of all who things. said that? <laughs> it was like a deleted comment because we were talking about like what it means to be a peasant or a serf, and like we like mentioned like Ireland like, as a peasant. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, so this movie was not received super positively critically, but it got a ton of views upon release. It was like the most watched movie on streaming the weekend it came out. Wow, uh, it was which huge, is Labor yeah. Day weekend, yeah. Uh, and then Kay Cannon said that she really wanted the stepsisters to sing Royals, but the producers were like, no. Like, after the ball, they'd be like, we'll never be Royals, you know? See, mm. what? Are you kidding? <laughs> I I wanted... They were my favorite. And I they got so much brunt. I feel like if casting Maddie Balio from Hairspray Live fame... And also this like Leslie Mann Jr. as yes. the stepsisters. I was like, you could not show me more were beautiful just women. Backup singers this entire yeah. movie, which was it was weird. Yeah. I was waiting for their number, but right. I mean... and I was like, oh, you want you want me to believe that they're the ugly stepsisters? No. Mm-mm. No. And, and we really I, I feel like too much focus on the royal family, not enough on her family, but Right. I mean, you can say that. Let's yeah. say that. <laughs> so right company. now, say it. <laughs> say I'm saying it right now, and we're gonna. We're, but we're gonna jump. We're gonna jump to lore. Right. So we're lore. gonna t- be talking about up. Cinderella. 
So this movie, like literally every movie of Cinderella, not literally, but almost, is based on the Charles Perrault Cinderella, which is the version most of you guys will remember. He gave her the glass slippers. He put the pumpkin in there. The fairy godmother, you know, like that's he accessorized it. He solidified that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but Cinderella is again been told by the entire world. It's the most popular folktale in the history of folktales. It's all versions in almost every society. Um, belongs to the world it, again. ATU type on tops and Uther five ten a the persecuted heroine. But Cinderella is such a wide story; it even has its own categorization system. Girl with magic tree. Girl goes to ball slash church slash feast. Type A B, oh, which is God. both. <laughs> type B I, which is escaping incest, and then Type C, where it's a boy magic tree and a stepmother. So like, yeah, she's... it's hitting a lot of. Yeah. it's hitting yeah. uh, the demos across the board <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna know this story yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're all gonna know this story um so we we saw it in kind of the ancient world but now you know we're gonna go th- travel through time quickly uh so this story was around in europe in the 12th century uh there was a sermon in a, uh, that was referenced that referenced the story of cinderella oh. so like people knew it it was being used in church so girl really has been everywhere. But, uh, you know, Hannah, do you remember uh, Jean Baptiste de Bézelé? Kind of. Yes. Mm-hmm. Do you remember which episode? Uh, oh. So back in... Almost, oh, I was going to say, is it Beauty and the Beast? Because French, but... Uh, he's uh, a Nepal- uh, Neapolitan. He's three flavors of ice cream in one. Um mm. He's, uh, he's from Naples, uh, and we talked about him in Sleeping Beauty with Sun, Moon, and Talia, a really horrible story about rape, attempted cannibalism, and screaming while being forced to strip that ends with the moral, some people are even lucky when they sleep. Yep, I remember yeah. that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. so like the worst, I'm going to say the worst of the four version, or four or five versions of Sleeping Beauty we talked about for the Disney movie. Even yeah. worse than the medieval version, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, he, uh, was a Neapolitan writer and courtier. I read about him in this book called The Fairy Tellers, different from our po- friend podcast called The Fairy Tellers. Uh, and he wrote The Pentamorone, The Tale of Tales, in between 1634 and 1636, so roughly 374 years before the release of, Di- or 370 years before the release of Disney's Chicken Little. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course. So he had this book in, he wrote it was full of puns and purple prose that don't always translate well and references to mythology but he had like earliest the earliest european versions really of sleeping beauty cinderella snow white hansel and gretel like cupid and psyche beauty and the beast little brother and little sister the fairies frau holly king thrushbeard rapunzel the girl without hands faithful john donkey skin so like your top tiers and your slightly deeper cuts and your deepest cuts I was going to say, there's a lot of B-sides in there. Yeah, he <laughs> has some B-sides. Some Brothers Groom B-sides had their start in the Bentham Marone, uh, which is told in a really racist frame story. So uh, that's, that. yeah. Um, but it, one of these stories is called The Cinderella Cat, which is like the uh. oldest main Cinderella in Europe. I don't want to excite you. There's like no cats in this story. Oh. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Truly criminal. Uh-huh. Yeah. Between the rapey Sleeping Beauty a racist frame story and no cats in this three for three yeah this guy Take sucks him to jail. Take him to jail. <laughs> yeah. uh so his opening is in the sea of malice envy always exchanges ruptures for bladders and when she hopes to see others drowned finds herself underwater or dashed to pieces against a rock this happened to certain envious girls whose story i intend to tell you well then yeah so we're starting off with bladders, so you know it's going to be good. Um, <laughs> uh, and this is why why also we're telling this version is because I want us to think about like if you had to say what is the story of Cinderella about essentially, what what is you what, what what would you go with? Uh, escape from servitude. I mean, the first thing that popped in my head was like rags to riches, but I feel yeah. like that I don't know that implies that. I don't know. I I feel scared to even like 
say anything <laughs> terrible about Cinderella given the company. No, I mean um, we're we're all allowed to have if you're like it's about women being servants. I mean that's what Kay Cannon uh, thought. <laughs> right. So I was like, bring back the racist version. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um I feel like the Cinderella like the the story itself like she didn't did she work hard to get where she is in the end because i listened to you recommend that i listen to like the original root version yeah. of cinderella today and i was like literally listened to that and it was fully a 15 minute like youtube video um that i listened to on my walk today and i was like oh no this is just like a spark notes version of everything that i feel like i know about this story there is nothing more to be had with this story i don't know but like the character cinderella does she work hard i mean I you not... know that's that i think that's a fair analysis right like especially if we're looking at the perot version and like mm -hmm. the values that he instills and it's that version is like yeah you know it you know like you know yeah. it you know you know those details um i am excited to get to some this is going to be a fun version and then uh, I enjoyed the Chinese version and I'm excited to when we touch on the Brothers Grimm version mm -hmm. because you, this story can mean a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, so just thinking of like what is Cinderella about as we as we talk about envious bladders in this story. So <laughs> once upon a time there was a prince who was a widower with a daughter, loved her more than anything. She had a great governess slash sewing teacher, loved her, doted on her, but he had a new wife who had a bad attitude, was always giving his daughter dirty looks and scowling at her. And this girl, her name was the Zola, she'd complain to her governess and be like, I wish you were my mommy. You're so nice to me. And the governess is like, well, I have this crazy idea. If you follow it, you'll always have the whitest bread from the finest flour. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Uh, and uh, she was like, ask your stepmom to like go to the old trunk and look for one of the old dresses that you want to wear. She likes you to wear like old shit anyway. Uh, so like hold the lid for her as she rummages through. And then at one point, just let go and drop the lid on her neck. Uh, it'll break it. She'll die. And then ask your dad to marry me. And Zazola's like, cool, cool. Let's do that. Uh, so the plan goes off without a hitch. Wow. This step little girl's mom, great hey. at murder. Yeah, stepmom one. Why would you one? tell me that? Why would you yeah. invite me onto a Zoom call to tell me that? It's <laughs> disgusting. This could have been an email. <laughs> this really could have been an email. Uh, and... Uh, so soon, Zazola had a new stepmother named Carmosa, her sewing teacher. Uh, and at the wedding, a dove flies up, flies onto the balcony and is like, Zazola, if you ever need anything, the dove of the fairies of, of Sardinia is in your corner. And she's like, okay. Um, <laughs> Fully. That's what I would say, too. <laughs> yeah. He, and I, I, I love the... Okay. What's weird is I feel like I have heard this story before. For I some mean... reason, the like dropping, like the governess is like, hey, kill your stepmom. Yeah. I feel like I've heard this story before. The lid dropping, I believe there's a version of that in the Juniper Tree in the Brothers Grimm. Um, but that is a villainous character that mm. does the, the murder. Um, oh, this is our villain? <laughs> okay. The Zola. So the Zola has a new stepmom, Carmos Carmosa. The, I feel like the fairies are just like, girl, you're crazy. We love it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, like, what? So Carmosa was nice to her for five or six days, uh, it specifies. But then eventually she reveals, I actually have six daughters who are moving in. Random. Oh, God. And uh, she forgot that, that Zola, Zola got her her new place uh, because how sorry is the mind that has an evil mistress? I'm uh, always saying that. Same. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she So she pushed her daughters on the dad, made sure they were the prince's favorites, and he forgot about Zazola. And so she becomes covered in rags. She's forced to live in the cellar, do all the chores, and they call her Little Cinderella Cat because oh. she's all dusty and dirty. Not the cat that I wanted, but yeah, the no, not I, the cat. I guess I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> and so the prince later has to go on a business trip to Sardinia, 
And so he asked his stepdaughters, Imperia, Columba, Fiorella, Diamante, Columbina, and Pascarella. So there's a Columba and a Columbina. Uh, so he asked them, what do you want? And they're like, jewels, dresses, makeup, fancy things. And the prince, they specified to make fun of her, asked Zola, what do you want? Um, but Zola is not like other girls. And she's like, nothing except to commend me to the dove of the fairies and beg them to send me something. And if you forget, may it be impossible for you to go forward or back. Bear in mind what I say, thy intent, thy reward. <laughs> he's like, okay, bitch. You know, like <laughs> she's sticking her doves on him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, but, okay. So he does okay. his business trip, forgets, and then he gets his stuff for the stepdaughters, forgets about Zazola, and there's a storm and bad winds, so the ship won't leave. But the ship's captain has a dream with a fairy that's like, hey, your master doesn't give a shit about his own daughter. And until he does, like, he'll be stuck. Like, he needs to do what she asked. And he told the prince, he's like, oh, yeah, I forgot. So he goes to the grotto of the fairies, no location, you know. <laughs> and this uh, young, beautiful fairy girl comes out and is like, say hi to the Zola and thank her for her kind regards and for remembering us. And he gives him a date tree, golden spade and watering can, and silk. So he takes it back to Zazola and she's like, yes, just what I wanted. She plants it, takes care of it. She waters it and cleans off the water with the silk. So within four days, it's like a woman-sized tree. And a fairy walks out and is like, what do you want? And she's like, I want to sneak out of the house sometimes. And the fairy is like, just say, oh, my golden date tree with golden spade I've dug thee, with golden can I've watered thee, with golden napkin dried thee, strip thyself and robe thou me. Uh Okay. So, yeah, so she's like, oh, I can sneak out now. And so the next time there's a, a feast day, she does that to the tree. She gets a golden dress, a white horse, and 12 pages. Uh, so like human boy servants. And she mm-hmm. shows up at the feast, dazzles everyone. The king's there, and he's like, oh, she's hot. And he has a servant fault, try and follow her home. And she's like a stalker, so she throws money on the ground to distract him. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. And so she comes home. Her sisters are describing the feast just to be like, you couldn't come. And like the beautiful woman there just to like be rude to her. And the king, meanwhile, is mad that the servant failed and is like, get her next time. You like you better. So the next day, it's another feast day. Zazola asks the tree. A bunch of fairies come out. They give her like a whole spa treatment makeover. And this time the coach has six horses and there's pages and footmen and matching outfits. And she shows up. The king is like, uh, she's hot. Sends the servant after again. <laughs> now she throws jewels and pearls to distract the servant. And the king is like, servant, if you fail next time, I'm going to beat you. You know, this could be solved if he just paid his servant proper wages. He wouldn't be so distracted by the money and jewels. Yeah. Exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Why <laughs> yeah. is he being so distracted by the money on the ground when he has a job to do? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. Maybe he just doesn't like stop your workers. Women. Yeah. So he's like, workers oh, that too. He's like, <laughs> oh, I guess I'm distracted by the money. I couldn't yeah. like stalk this teenage girl. Uh, An adequate <laughs> adequate wage to stalk women, please. Yeah. Yes. In this yeah. economy, yeah. <laughs> um, so the same thing next day, she has so many attendants. She looks like a courtesan who is being arrested, which is like a Naples thing. That there are certain streets that only nobles were allowed to promenade in coaches. Mm. And like sir, courtesan women would like do it and then they would commonly and they would get arrested and they'd be surrounded by police. So it was like a um. common sight. Mm. So this time the servant is literally holding on to the coach, which is driving so fast. But he falls off, but she, it's driving so fast she loses like a fancy high heel. Mm. Um, and upon seeing the shoe, the king says, if the foundation is so fair, what must be the mansion? A lovely candlestick which holds the candle that consumes me. O tripod of the lovely cauldron in which my life is boiling. O beauteous corks attached to the fishing line of love. The shoes are made of cork, which has caught his soul. Behold, I embrace and enfold you. And if I cannot reach the plant, I worship the roots. If I cannot possess the capitals, I kiss the base. You first imprisoned a white foot. Now you have ensnared a stricken heart. Through you, she who sways my life was taller by a span and a half. Through you, my life grows by that much in sweetness, so long as I keep you in my possession. 
Okay, I see your next line, and I thought that too. I said, "Okay, uh, Dan Schneider, go make put, victorious." Put fetish. <laughs> wow, this is people joke about the prince and Cinderella having a foot fetish. In this, it's just it's straight up true. Yeah, a white foot fetish. He's yes. Oh, what, okay, so that there lies the problem. Listen, I'm okay. I've only had one man before that has I've been with that has had a foot fetish, and I was like, oh. I've it's... never actually saw my foot, my feet, plural, as like a object of affection. And here I am thinking like suddenly like, oh, there is, there is something there that people enjoy. And I'm like, wow, that's great. I don't know. Is that weird to be sharing? No, I, th- I, I do think people act like a foot fetish is the weirdest the like death possible. penalty. Yeah, it's certainly and not. it's like such a vanilla fetish when you really step yes. back and think about it. Like some and of the gay bars I know have furry night and diaper night and like all these different things. It could and it s- could be very well <laughs> worse. So like a yeah. foot is just like a part of an adult human body. You know, right? Like yeah. I just remember being very I'll put you in in the room with me. I I, I was just very flattered when I was like, okay back at my place, taking off my my shoes as I do in my own apartment. And he was in the middle of talking and and then he just stopped. And I was like, wow, that's the power of my foot. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's great. Oh no, I'm not even, I'm not gonna king shame here. No. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. worst thing about this king is threatening to beat his servant, not that he... Right, 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 right. That yeah. was not my case. Yeah, yeah and that's really yeah. the... by If we're talking about Dan Schneider, like, the problem with him isn't really that he's in defeat. Listen, mainly... no. people give Dan Schneider too much shit. He was really nice to me that night, okay? He really <laughs> he stopped talking about Nickelodeon for a second to look at my feet, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> He was great until <laughs> he that. realized I was an adult. Right. <laughs> yeah. So the king throws a feast and invites women of all rank to try on the shoe. And the quote they say is, where did all the tarts and cakes come from? Where are all the stews and rizzolis? All the macaroni and gravioli, which were enough to stuff an entire army. So there was lots okay. of pasta. Uh no one fit the shoe, so he's asking people, "Do you know any other women?" He's he's uh, Billy on the street. Name a woman. <laughs> Name a woman. <laughs> yeah. and, and this prince is like, "Oh, I have a daughter, but she always stays home to mind the hearth. She's a sorry. The quote is, "For she is a sorry, worthless creature, not fit to take her place at the table where you eat." Mm. And uh, Damn. savage. Yeah, the king is like, oh, well, bring her. She's top of the guest list. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for those. <laughs> uh, so he takes her the next day and he's the king sees her and is like, that's her. And then the shoe flies out and like lands on her foot magically. Oh, cool. And he crowns her. He's like, guys, bow to your new queen. And her mm-hmm. stepsisters sneak away. They're like super jealous. And they go home telling their mother he is mad who opposes the stars. And that's the moral that he gives us. Uh huh. Astrology girlies, this one's for you. Right. <laughs> you know, astrology she was girlies a, she are going to be real mad at this one. <laughs> she was a Scorpio. Okay, she murdered her stepmom, but that happens when you're a Scorpio. Doesn't mean she needs to be punished. <laughs> right. She gets to be a princess. Yeah. That's wild. Because if you think about like Cinderella is about like kindness, virtue being rewarded. And you think of yeah. like how we usually interpret like Perot, like especially like she's so gracious and kind to her stepsisters. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so in that way, and so I can sometimes feel like this movie kind of misses that message. But maybe what Cinderella really is, is Cinderella is a story of abuse. Mm-hmm. You know, an abuse of homes and abuse of situations. And how you and like trying to get out of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're trying to make me feel like shit for saying that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, no. because Helen's whole thing is like that he sees it as that story of like kindness and virtue being rewarded. Yeah. And I was like, it's escape from servitude. So yeah. that's the thing is, it I is think like everyone interprets it so differently. Yeah. Cause I, know, think... I feel like such an asshole now because I'm no. like, no, 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 oh. I, I will take full blame because. Okay. 
I was just like, yeah, no, she didn't work for it. But like, no, she literally fucking did. We see like her, maybe not in this version where she's in this like decked out like little basement. Um, I'm like, I want to go to there. Yeah. But yeah, that's a nice basement. It's a nice basement. But like, no, baby girl put in the hours. Like, I think that she deserves a little Cinderella moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I retract my statement. The, I, the thing is, like, you saying that, even though that's not how I would describe the story, I'm not like, how could you get that? How could you interpret it? Because it is, like, like especially in the pro version, a godmother shows up. There's no explanation as to how, why, you know, how it's connected to her previous actions. And so, like, a mm. magical wand does kind of fix a lot of her problems. So that is, yeah. like, very much a way to interpret the story, I think you know, when you talk about like abuse situations and like the rights, we talked in our first Cinderella episode a lot about like when that movie came out, when the story was written, both like the rights of women were so far from where they are today. Mm. And, you know, I'll say, I'll be an asshole. I actually didn't know what the different waves of feminism were. I knew like vaguely, but you should just rely on Hannah to be like, this is so second wave feminism right now. And I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm, for sure. Uh, so I looked it up on uh the history channel website the most feminist source out there um mm, yeah, yeah sure <laughs> your dad's favorite channel um <laughs> yeah, so, there you go. uh but it's which second you know there's the second wave feminist movement was a lot of it was financial freedom and so we talked about like in the first cinderella like in the 50s you know, not the first, but the first one we talked about like when that movie came out like you women couldn't have their own credit cards bank accounts like that this movie you can people t- talked a lot about it as girl boss or capitalist cinderella but there is something to be said of it kind of advocating for women's financial independence um, yeah especially when you look at like the why everything happens to cinderella that does is because she can't in that cl- more traditional version is she has no other options so she, other than to like just be kind and endure what's happening to her Mm-hmm. You know, like there isn't much out in the world for her. And so, you know, we can be glad that these waves of feminism happened. So there's more opportunities for people in abusive situations. Yeah, I saw your note here about like, like the the girl boss version of feminism and like what wave that is. And yeah, like, so I don't know much about fourth wave feminism because when I studied it, when I studied feminism intellectually in college, uh, we hadn't really defined fourth wave. It was like sort of we are still in third wave feminism, yeah. which is the 90s, mm-hmm. which is sort of like the girl power era type feminism. Um, but yeah, so like fourth wave feminism is a more about sexual harassment, body shaming, rape culture, dealing with those issues. Um, which I guess makes sense with, you know, the Me Too movement and stuff. And this is stuff I'm just looking at right now on Google. But um, there is that, like, the girl boss energy, like, uh, girl wash your face type energy in this too, where, like, it is still the financial independent stuff, which I think this movie does still grapple with. So, uh, yeah, yeah. This movie has a lot, there's a lot of interesting, like, it's like, sometimes it's like, I get what it's trying to do, but I don't know if it necessarily stuck the landing, but I'm yeah. like, you know, at least it's trying it, you know, it's like that's adding true. that to the conversation. Cause I think that's not part of it in the animated one. And I think, I know it's like, we went out of chronological order cause I didn't want this to be like one of our last ones, but now I'm kind of, it's like, in so many ways, I feel like this is almost an adaptation more of the 2015 Cinderella than of oh, anything else with like what mm. it plays with, like what tropes it's subverting and like what scenes it's including. Because right. there's almost like, you know, especially with like Ever After, there's like, a, now there's almost like certain bits that are like now canon to Cinderella, even though they're not part of the, like, this is the scene where we humanize the stepmother. This is the scene where yeah. they meet before the ball. Right. You know, like, this is all this, like, uh, there's often, like, a male antagonist, you know, in addition to the stepmother. So it's uh, it's interesting, the, the history of this movie and film. But let's really dive, now that we've kind of had our, like, intro, like, what is Cinderella about? Let's kind of explore what intends to be a subversive film. 
Yes. The intention is definitely there. And I don't remember if I said already, but I don't hate the idea of this movie. I just, I th- I think it's actually for me very much how I felt about Lisa Frankenstein while we talked about it is like, I actually would have wanted to rewrite it. I want to get in there with Kay Cannon and be like, okay, what are we doing? Do we need to do this or can we do something else? I actually feel like that's what I feel about this movie. That's so interesting that you bring up Lisa Frankenstein, a movie that I've yet to see. But oh, you gotta what I, see it. Gotta see it and then check out our episode with Passages Podcast. On Lisa From what I know about Diablo Cody is that she is very, maybe you know this as well, that she is a very like, she submits the script and then she's like, that's it. There's no rewrites to oh, okay. her content. Tracks, tracks, I, I guess as of recently, but I heard that in, in relation to Lisa Frankenstein with Frankenstein, which I've heard mixed reviews about, but I understand oh, that yeah. you both like it. Oh, well. I uh, think I liked it more than Hannah. I think. Okay. I, I loved guest, it, but I also yeah. hated it because it was close to being so good. But I, it's so interesting. You say that like, as of probably of late, Diablo Cody can just submit something and they're like, yes, we're going to make it. Yeah. Because she's Diablo Cody now. Right. Like, yeah. That right. makes sense. That makes but, sense. like, yeah. a, I mean, not to go on a Diablo Cody like tangent, but like Tully was like a movie that I absolutely adore. And, you know, keeping in mind that like maybe she didn't do a rewrite for that, I'm like, who needs it? I don't know. Right. But um, when it comes to like this movie, gosh, like, I. I like it for what it is. And I feel like from my understanding of what it is, is that it's like every, what I said earlier, where it's like every five or seven years we get, or even maybe even less than five, we get like a Cinderella adaptation. And, mm-hmm. and it's like, I don't know. It's just like, is it, I don't want to just like be like, wah, wah, like negative person, <laughs> but just like, is it just a, a cash grab to, to retell a, a story that we're familiar with with the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazeem yes. and Merry Christmas. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's also a, again, if we're talking about it being a more quote unquote feminist version sure. because of what it is and isn't including the the bits that it's turning on its head it, right it, so like is the, it doing it in a genuine like as a genuine we want to do this or is it we want to grab that money yeah i don't know i mean like yeah. i don't want to be like so overtly like negative and contrarian to everything but i feel like that's like kind of like my vibe right now <laughs> that's but, always my vibe <laughs> but like I'm like, okay, I'm, I was watching this movie and I'm like, do I feel like any of these, um, like, because there were like a number, like I felt like all of the female, do I want to put a blanket statement across all the female characters? No, but I want to say like, at least like Camilla Cabello as Cinderella, um, the the princess character mm-hmm. and also, um, gosh, Oh, Mini Driver, the queen, where it's like, okay, these feel like all like very safe ideas of like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this, this very safe girl boss sort of vibe Mm -hmm. um, for this movie. And I, my opinion doesn't mean anything about feminism because you oh, no, I mean, okay. No, well, about <laughs> feminism. I, I, that was, there was a, there was an <laughs> end of that sentence um, because Hannah, you obviously like studied feminism. So I'm like much more curious in, in hearing, I guess, how like you feel like it actually like tackled like modern feminism. Yeah. Um, I, oh gosh, I wish I had, let me pull up the text to Cullen because I said, um, let's see. Oh, the, the oh I did, that. I did go on a tiny rant about her, um, embroidery, uh, yeah. pantomime, which was so bad. Okay. So I said the stepmom is so anti-girl boss and then Cinderella is such a girl boss that the movie just kind of evens out and it's a 360 back to being offensive. Right. And it's so just boss. Yeah. It's just boss. 
it is really <laughs> it's boss baby yeah it's <laughs> it's really strange where it's like some moments i was like oh this is cute but yeah. most of the movie i was just kind of like you can't fool me bezos you know <laughs> you can't fool me because i just don't feel like this is genuine it just yeah right yeah no and that's exactly how i feel because it's like you can't I, I don't know because I watch these movies and it's like I I, I think Amazon Prime very specific like very like hit the nail on the head with that one where it's like I'm watching this movie on Amazon Prime I know what I'm watching you know I'm watching Camila Cabello as Cinderella I'm not looking at a very nuanced vision of feminism as it relates to 2021 or anything it's just like I'm watching the same movie where it's like they have James Corden's head attached to a mouse's body for like maybe like a full like 45 seconds before he actually like falls to the ground it's like I'm not it's unfortunately too long like I I'm so sorry if you're looking to this movie for like your vision of feminism or your vision of truly I don't know anything. Is that too much of a blanket Cinderella. statement? Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's, you're not going to get it here. You know what you're going to get with this movie. And it's like, it's not, it's not anything no. intelligent. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. The, the feminism felt very, very safe and very like almost dated by the time it came out. And mm. I think, I mean, when we talk about, you know, I, I think part of me just feels like it really missed what people resonate with with the character of Cinderella like people aren't thinking of Zazola you know offing somebody you know they're thinking of like kindness and like optimism and it's like I don't know if that's necessarily the writing or Camilla or something and it's just I think we're not getting that and I think you can tell that this person doesn't like what they're adapting and Mm -hmm. I think that is because I think it's one thing like I wrote my thesis on trying to like tell a more feminist version of Cinderella like and that's what I tried to Mm. do with like my adaptation it's like how do I capture what people love about her and what I love about her well admitting that like we want to tell something a little more different now than you know in 370 years before Chicken Little you know so it's I like I just you can see that she didn't approach this like oh I love this story how do I modernize it you can feel that with movies like maybe the Lily James one or Ever After or even Ella Enchanted you know like you can get a feeling and even Brandy you know that they're like trying to update it a bit and they love it but they want it to to be more modern and you don't get that you get the feeling that they're like oh what if we did this trash story we made it actually good you know well, I don't I, I don't know if like this is like making it so overcomplicated the way that we're looking at this movie, but I feel as though like sometimes when I'm watching like current movies that I'm like, okay, I'm I'm looking for reasons to throw it out, which I don't feel is a fair assessment. But like if I were to watch this movie, say in 2002, 2003, where I'm a very impressionable and I'm like, would this movie mean more to me? in its scope of feminism, of, gosh, I don't even know what other even ideas that yeah. even tackled, but yeah. like, would it's, just, I don't know, because I, I think, is it a skewed view that you watch a movie with a fully formed brain? I mean, mm. I, I almost want to say yes, in that I think if this movie came out in the 2000s, it would have been a kind of edgy. And I think even if it came right. out in 2019, it would have been edgier than when it came out in 2021, like a post COVID, like some people have to work with masks on and Carl's Jr. Some people are, you know, singing Imagine from their mansion, like in that like post world. Like I think yeah. like you, this movie was hurt by COVID and that like it, the cultural dynamic around it. Like, that's I, when we fell out of love with the girl boss. Yeah. Was you during could, COVID. when your girl boss was like coming to the office, I don't care if you get sick yeah, and you're die. Like, oh, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That, and like think... we had Black Lives Matter. There's a lot more class consciousness, a lot more idea of the systemic issues. And I think, yeah, I think if this movie came out in 2013, BuzzFeed would be like, here's why this movie updated Crusty movie... Cinderella. Yeah. No, Unlike... I get that the 1950s Cinderella where I talked about how the world that she was in was sinister because she's trading one servant life for potentially another where she's just going to be bearing children for the the prince and the king her right? gay husband and with her gay husband dad. Right, right. Yeah. so um but 
So that movie is grappling with systemic issues, even if you're not actually looking for it. This movie doesn't touch on systemic issues, really. It talks about them, but it's not actually grappling with them. The whole plot is that the fact that she has a very active thing that we're watching her do to get out of the situation where we're like, oh, what is Cinderella doing in the 1950s movie? Well, she can't really do much because of the system she's in. It's like they're just putting her in girl boss mode so that everyone's like, yeah, she actually worked to get out of her situation instead of just sitting there and taking it. I think that's that's our that's my central issue yeah. is that they're mm. just wedging that in there because they want to give audiences no reason to be like this movie's anti-feminist and that was you know? the discourse around cinderella in like the 2010s and yes. that's why i mean like if this movie mm-hmm. came in a few years earlier i think audiences would have embraced it more yeah well i'm I'm curious to ask both of you maybe this is too heavy of a question but i'm like what are you both looking for in the next adaptation of cinderella in like a way that it would improve the story that it would be conscious of the year that it's coming out i feel like that's very up in the air because we don't know when it would come out but i mean like what what would i guess like a present day cinderella what would the factors be that you would be looking for that would be um up to par because i feel like this was very just like a a coming in at just like a passing um grade you know where it's like you you did you did the job you told the the story of cinderella as it relates to 2021 but did you do anything over the top with it i i don't think so across the board but yeah i i don't i don't know because again i see cinderella's story as overcoming abuse uh, escape from servitude like you're in this horrible situation and i think it was our guest who mentioned that uh I think it was the woman who voiced Cinderella said that Cinderella wasn't asking for a prince. She just wanted a pretty dress and a night off because Mm. she was, you know, she was a servant. And so I think that like, we can still tell a story about a servant girl who is being abused and how she gets magic out of it. I still think there's valid reasons to tell that story. Um, I think this kind of goes back to the little mermaid discourse we had where you know they cleansed uh ursula's song because they probably didn't want to make it seem like oh well we can't tell girls they should keep their mouths shut well the fucking villain is saying that of course like we're not going to believe what ursula says so it's it's this thing of like we're where people are afraid to grapple with tough issues in movies even if it isn't completely fully resolved because they don't want to be buzzfeeded into oblivion and being told that like their movie sucks because of x y and z anti-feminist racism etc like all these is up so yeah i mean when i adapted i specifically chose the brothers Grimm to adapt and i made it kind of a story about like kindness as an inner power in like a very tangible magical way and it was about her and like her society and wanting like justice not only for her but for other people who were you know like suffering you know like so it was much like it had very much a rags to riches like a concept of like there's poverty in her world you know and people fighting to eat and like her idealizing this festival she remembers because she associates it when when things were better and more prosperous right um i think you know if i like i think things that i think there needs should be a gay one like a big gay cinderella i think that a lesbian cinderella a gay cinderella a trans cinderella i think there's so you could do interesting stuff with like a trans character and the concept of transformation Mm -hmm. you know of like this is who i really am like this is who i am like oppressed in my house and then to the outside world like this is fabulous you know and that could come on that could be cringe it could be good. No, I, as you're saying that, I'm like uh, in the wrong hands. Like, yeah, I yeah. Am depends scared. on the hands. Yeah, yeah I right. think you'd. I would definitely. If it was to be a trans character, I'd want a trans director. 
at least a yeah. trans writer. You We're know. not getting Ryan Murphy anywhere near that script. <laughs> no. And you know what? Ryan Murphy is tapped into the Zoom call right now, and he's like, hmm, actually, wait a minute. <laughs> <Reporting> live. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the next season of American Horror Story is an like, adaptation. Wait. And it, it, you know that it would be like called like trans Arella. I It would just yeah. be something stupid. Yeah. It would just be like, just like so like zombie together. But I don't know. Like the in this in the same breath that I'm like, well, what what would it take for like a good Cinderella? I, like it sounds so annoying when I like think about it back because it's like, no, I think that we're not us collectively, but just like people are just like so specific about uh, spe- specifically like female stories that it's like we're really really looking for like a reason that they didn't get it right, and I don't want yeah. that to be like yeah. my takeaway of this conversation but it's like i am voicing that opinion so yeah i I definitely think like when this movie came out it's like the girl boss backlash was there and i think for this some of it was valid and then eventually like we when we talked about wish we talked about like how rancid the discourse was like from day one how like no one wanted this movie to succeed and like people called her a pick me and i'm like there's literally like no man she's trying to impress other than like a job interview for something she's passionate about and like that movie had its issues but like it's like people create this discourse and then just like throw it everywhere and they (laughs) apply it to everything whether or not it actually applies and that yeah no that's so fascinating because that movie yeah there was no like love interest like that is like not even a fair yeah pick me to 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 put also i've heard that like that that even phrase is like rooted in some real nasty stuff Probably. so yeah yeah like this movie definitely has a dose of not like other girls ism and i think that's very easy right. to fall into just in the cinderella story in general and this movie like leaned sure. into it more mm-hmm. so than I would say, like Brandy or the animated one did. Yeah. Um. But you know, to really get into the, we've had th- that's the thing is this movie has a lot of interesting things to talk about. But th- let's talk about the yeah. movie itself. Uh, you know, if we start, we actually start on a high note with my favorite number of the movie, <laughs> uh, a mashup of Rhythm Nation. Uh, and Desiree's wannabe as we really that's your favorite number I just I think it slaps I I think it's like it was fine yeah but like just to listen to and like Adina's singing I'm dreaming you know and like you're like I'm like I'm I'm worth it like sets to me it sets the tone of like honestly probably would be better on stage but sets the tone of like okay you know there this is the village these are the people working here's the characters um here's Cinderella like here's her working here's her giving a biscuit to the mice friends when they squeak the song is a little much but um right. yeah you know and we meet the stepsisters their descriptions of them I don't know if they're really fair I guess they're such non-characters that you're kind of like okay, okay uh we meet <laughs> yeah we meet Vivian we yeah meet this Cinder- is, she saves the caterpillar right yeah it's literally a save the cat saves the cat ter- pillar. Pillar. yeah I God, was like, you are so smart for even catching that. Wow. I was screamed it... because I was like, no, they didn't. They did not just make a pun. Yeah. But like a meta wow. pun. Yeah, they did. And they, they mentioned her face is besmirched my cinder. So they call her Cinderella. I'm like, there's not a cinder on that face. No. 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 Neutrogena uh, that... clean. <laughs> right. And like, also, she was being so involved in like the family ongoings too that I'm like, this girl is part of the family. You cannot convince me. Also, this otherwise. girl's not a servant. She, right. just she does one thing basement. for them. She yeah. makes tea. She makes and, tea. That's wait, it. and also, what, what was like the half assed reason that they gave? And here I go, like being like, about this movie. But, um, <laughs> But like, what was the half ash reason for like the reason that Adina Menzel and the um the stepsisters were doing the laundry and not Cinderella? She was teaching them that if you don't get a husband, you're yeah. gonna be you know oh. a servant girl. You, don't get okay, a you know what? That's husband. not a half ass. I'll take that. That's it's, fine. But it's like with if we're looking at it, this is an adaptation of Cinderella and like what is she known for? She she doing the works chores. in the house and like right. we don't then, see her do any chores. No, and we see and them they do have a whole chore number. They do chores. It drove me insane. They have two chore numbers. They do the laundry. Yeah, and so no. that's why I literally was like, 
I don't feel bad for her because I don't understand what her struggle is. It's not as clear from yeah. the second we see her. So it's very strange. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we get, okay, she lives in the basement. Uh, she Her father's dead. You know, um, she's, the stepmother keeps her in, but she could be on the street. And we get that the kingdom is rooted in tradition, which is actually something that they say at the beginning of the animated Cinderella. It's yeah. rich in romance and tradition, oh. right? And they say this is like bound by tradition. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it's amazing what a few years will do to the concept of tradition. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so they say, so yeah, she says a butterfly. She serves them tea. She's like, imagine if you serve such gar- crap, crap tea to your future husband. He'd leave mm. you. Um, uh, and uh, they get a visit from their creepy neighbor, Thomas. Uh, right they're being so rude to him i'm sorry that was crazy he's like oh my her blossoming daughters one of the steps is right no him. he was also cringe yeah yeah, yeah. He, he said was, chicks he was... dig it his cane yeah they he, he was weird because i was like i don't like him but clearly the the one girl definitely likes him yeah and so right. i was like okay i mean he said some weird stuff, but like that one girl's into it. So I guess he, they're fine. Yeah. I don't know. Working. Something's weird. Something's working. I don't know what's <laughs> yeah. going on. Yeah. It's uh. there's also a lot of interest, like the, the slang usage, like she cray, she, she cray, pop in, yeah. you know, like yeah. it's I was very confused, like where I was in the world and also like yeah. when, when I was. Yeah. yeah. When, but I was like also like choosing to let let it all go because I feel like that's what yeah. I was being told by Kay Cannon. Yeah. Kay Cannon was in my living room watching it with me and was yeah. like, let that yeah. shit go. Let go. Seriously, yeah. Let bro. it go. Yeah. I, again, I think a lot of it, I was surprised. I was like, does she have a lot of theater background? And I don't think so. But I was like, a lot of this to me would be like, oh, I'd laugh on stage. If this was a play, I might laugh. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is where, you know, we learn about her, her dream. I want song. I want song to make dresses and run a business. And she sings million to one. You're going to know my name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she does a reprise of that later. Yeah. You're not getting off that easy. (laughs) Yeah. I, I, you know. It's fine. It's, it's a fine song. I don't remember. I remember, I, I did not remember thinking she sounded bad in this song when I first saw this movie. And I I think it's Okay. I, yeah. I felt like she's she this time I was like, oh, I don't know if she sounds great. And I'm not usually someone who notices that. Like I talked, we talked about this on Let's yeah. Put a Song when we talked about Mean Girls, that like people were critiquing a lot of the perf- and I was like, I was here, I enjoyed it. Oh yeah, I'm there for a good time. I'm not yeah. I'm not a vocal producer. No, yeah. No. Yeah. I thought it was fine, but there were times throughout the whole movie that they auto-tune the shit out of people where it yeah. just sounded bad yeah like very I, electronic I, was I like, feel I feel like somebody like hated her on this set and like there are times where it was like <laughs> James you could have used a different take you could have found a dress that fit her body you could have you know like you could have done something to like support her as your lead actress and so it, yeah especially like there's a take in am I wrong that it's like did you hate her? Is she being <laughs> oh. Camila Cabello? Are you being bullied? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What, are you talking about the? And there was like multiple times in this movie where she was doing the. This is a video media. Oh, so if you're watching on YouTube, the whoa, 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 whoa. like yeah. she's really doing yeah. a lot with like her mouth. But I guess if you're singing that song, you the mouth kind of do need to be like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> it is yeah. a she's be, she's belting. Um, and this is it's like there i really just want to get into the weeds of this, but this is a key thing to discuss is that does she like creativity or capitalism mm. and i think we get so little about what she likes about dresses designing dresses also oh. the the dress oh, i would argue we yeah. get so little of her yeah i know more about that prince behind you yeah. than i do about her there, there is a scene where i laughed because I was like, wait, you guys completely skipped this beat. Uh, mm. And they did not feel bad about it at all. Yeah. I just, so. yeah, I, I felt like I was like, does she, she talks about wanting to run a business. 
but it she it doesn't really talk about wanting to do like make dresses or how that creativity like I love making someone feel great about themselves I love being daring like she makes kind of ugly dresses and she just it's like she just wants it as a business thing and I just to compare it to like Tiana right is Which, it financial freedom that she wants but they don't but they I is wish this I, what you crave <laughs> because <laughs> but lean because, into like, that then but that's why, like, everyone in the town is laughing at her. They're like, ha, ha, a woman doing business? Like, I think she, I think she literally wants to be a girl boss. I yeah. think that's, I, she, that's I what did she think wants. that it was a very interesting choice that, like, there were women laughing at her in the, in yeah. the town. That I was being like, offended. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. This yeah. is a nuanced view. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to compare to Tiana and I mean I don't I'm not I'm not gonna get on here and say Princess and the Frog is a perfect movie but I do think like there's a lot built into like what she loves about cooking and like community yeah and like how she wants her restaurant to be a beacon of that and I think you know Disney is very uncomfortable talking about race so there's a lot going on there that sometimes is addressed sometimes isn't but yeah. I I wish we had more of like what she because like Cinderella being a dress designer is a really fun choice right sure. I've you know I've done it yeah. you know like it's I think it makes sense but like get what she likes about it like is she yeah. really daring like if, is she like like a Cruella Emma Stone like let's Again, go over the just, top but also like, we want like, her to do something to get out of her situation they don't right. care what but also I don't know <laughs> having a business a dress business requires a lot more than like ideas of dresses like I want to see her sort of like allocate work to the yeah. mice or something <laughs> you know, yeah. which is found I want to see her girl boss right I want to see her if she wants to be a girl boss then girl boss, boss. exactly right. yeah I like I, I I don't know I'm just like it's like okay, like yeah, then she doesn't do it. understand what having a business entails. Yeah, she <laughs> she, she thinks likes it is get just off your ass and work. I feel like I nobody just to work nowadays. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Look at those mice. Think of how much those animated mice did for animated Cinderella. Any of these lazy fucks. Right, yeah, seriously, right. like, those mice are so pointless. I can't <laughs> even. Well, because it would have cost. We saw these these mice and what these CGI mice were capable of doing. They were not able to walk around. No. That was the the CGI animators did not get paid enough to do nope. all that. Nope. They no. had to stay stationary. They yep. were paid in Amazon Prime coupons. <laughs> right. uh, it's like, no, oh, we have a lot of really great content on Amazon Prime. But I I think not getting into like what she loves about it is what makes another strike against her as a sympathetic lead someone to root for is yeah. because she just wants to run a business you know something that that's actively ruining our earth you know where it's like if you got into <laughs> oh i want to make camilla cabello you are ruining <laughs> our earth, earth. <laughs> Look at those Cinderella. Cinderella. This is our no. one singular Earth, Camilla. Please. please. Uh, no, it's just like you know, if they just le there's just it just was a slight thing that they could have either leaned into. I want financial freedom, or I love being creative, right. and I want an opportunity to do that. Yeah. And I, you know, it would have been an easy little rewrite. Um. So meanwhile, there's an announcement. Oh, they there's a rapping guard. Um. Or, oh, they wanted uh, the well so bad so right it was, it was like Lin Manuel was like assigned on and then it we like he couldn't make his flight or something and they were like oh god <laughs> <Light. laughs> so uh, yeah. the, the town crier this was yeah. John England he couldn't get the flight yeah um and so uh he raps about the changing of the guard um Cinderella you know she wants to bring her ugly puce dress to sell <laughs> Uh, so she wants to girl boss MLM at like a public event. Uh, <laughs> and Vivian is like, no woman is going to shamefully run a business. Like you're going to shame this household with your businessy ways. You're going to smile because girls are worth more when they smile and get a husband. Hmm. I'm also always saying that. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Every time <laughs> when I walk out the door, I'm like, don't <laughs> put shame on this family by doing business. Smile. I'll be worth more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
so there so she her dreams are being crushed you know she's oppressed um meanwhile let's check in on our male lead our gay icon here our straight gay icon um (laughs) (laughs) there's one straight man who i'll say it's a gay icon (laughs) it's joel nicholas uh so he likes to party again another movie where he's prince harry coded um he likes to party he doesn't want to marry this lesbian princess uh and yeah he wants to be gay with his vague pos- vaguely defined posse of bros yep. right and like he's like uh i'm busy fox hunting while drunk this the some of these scenes these guys aren't in their acting bag i'm sorry like no. a, obviously he's a great actor i've seen him in a lot of things but this scene a little awkward he doesn't want to care about the sea monster land there's a bunch of princesses waiting to marry him and she's like good luck he's not that interested i'm like is he gay is he yep he's yeah. gay right he's gay yeah he's gay he's giving uh Cusco the <laughs> no no let me guess you have a great personality uh mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah he just wants to party and the king is like i wanted the sea monster you have to get married and carry my legacy Queen Beatrice finds him amusing and is bored and frustrated. And he's like, shut up, wife. Like, you indulge him. And she's like, I'll be brushing my hair. Criminal underuse of the light of my life, mini driver. Um, Mm. And uh, the king's uh, idiot son, there's a play going on about him. And the, the king threw the actors in the dungeon. He's like, you can't put actors down there without attention. They'll die. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. It's uh I really think there's so many royal characters and I I think yeah. We don't need a whole ass family for him. Um uh no. there people joke about Disney characters and their one parent. I'm like it's a budget thing. That's an animator. Let's, yeah, let's not that's a cast, ourselves. you know, like let's yeah. not fill out that's a lot of time. Baby's mm-hmm. dad is distant. We don't have time to animate him. Well, uh, it was like what this like D or even like E plot of Mini Driver and Pierce Brosnan marital they're... drama. I yeah. Like, Cut me was a break. Like, oh wait, this movie is called King and Queen. Oh <laughs> right. no, it's called Cinderella. Oh no, this is this is 2021 Cinderella. Right. Yeah. I, I you thought you thought you could get me fucked up right now. No. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so confused. Especially because they're like trying to be like, we were in love once, and you're like, you have the very easy thing of their royalty and it was arranged. And so maybe yeah. that's why they don't get along. Because if this is a story about abuse, you know, the real abuser, our real antagonist. Sorry to my mom it's Camilla and my for brushes. destroying our planet. Sorry, my mom <laughs> may be the person she has been fawning after for years um she just liked remington steel <laughs> okay um uh so he's like okay we're gonna have a ball there's a choir singing about the ball balls are fun uh who said that the choir in the background <laughs> i'm gonna put that on the target pride collection t-shirt um, <laughs> and i'll have beach balls on it um uh he's like you got to like pick a dance, like a you got to dance. He's like dancing is so mad and formal. It's like he's really trying to act these lines, and it's like, mm. yeah, it's. And then he's like, Gwen, or I'll give it to Gwen, and they're like, oh, not my bitch sister. And she's like, we right. need to give like, it as destroying the earth. We need to get rid of coal and power everything with wind. And I'm like, is this post industrial revolution? Um and but they're like shut up Meg I mean Gwen like no one cares about your ideas <laughs> yeah like this is where like the movie is talking about serious issues and treating them as jokes and I was like I don't understand is this supposed to be something that you care about or are we also supposed to find this just as a joke I don't why is she here I don't get it yeah it just it felt like she was there for the payoff in the end where it was like guess yeah. who's who guess who's the queen and I'm yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's like someone that we know um but i yeah that was just very weird they were but, just throwing too many players at me yeah because then it's like if the stakes are oh 
what if he doesn't become king? Then someone who's more qualified, maybe. But it's like, then there should there should be like an evil cousin then. Like, not cousin yeah. Richard. He eats babies, you know, whatever. Right. <laughs> cousin Richard, the baby eater. <laughs> the baby eater. Yeah. I mean, hey, we learned that Sleeping Beauty's mother-in-law eats babies. So could be anyone. Please. Could be anyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there he is singing somebody to love. Uh, Can I just brought say, me back to my Glee days? <laughs> it's Glee days brought me back to literally name any fucking musical movie. Uh-huh. Like uh, I was like the entire time I was watching this, I was like, I literally would rather be watching Ella Enchanted. Yes, um, oh, another yeah. Cinderella adaptation featuring the song "Somebody to Love" and yeah, starring exactly. Minnie Driver. <laughs> right, right. The connections there's too many, and also just like I don't know if that wasn't enough. I felt like the, the that entire musical number was like so unwarranted for his character that I was like, why are we giving quite possibly, can I say, one of the best songs of all time, maybe the best song of all time. And yes. we're giving it to this character that I don't give two fucks about. I don't know. Yeah. Especially at this like, point in the movie. We're like, yeah. he's a right. Fuck especially boy. like what, 15 guy. minutes in? No. Yeah. He's like, I work hard and they're like dressing him. Also, I I want to say that the costumes in this movie arrest whoever put his who designed gave him his pants. Mm. Like he'll be wearing like an outfit that like, okay, it looks good. And then you scroll down to the pants and you're like, oh God. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. looks better when he puts his little print suit on. But next episode, I will be showing oh, you how we'll a prince a, can dress. I said, we'll be talking about those pants. <laughs> those pants. <laughs> and again, the, as an adaptation of that movie, I think they're trying to avoid something. But at what cost? And making your male lead look like he's in diaper pants. <laughs> yes. It's not worth it. It's for the love of God. Yeah. Oh, my God. For the love of the real Cinderella, who probably was a cave <laughs> woman with how <laughs> widespread this story is. <laughs> uh and how old it is yeah uh so meanwhile like how he's awkward she's awkward because she climbed on a statue and he's like get off my dad and she's like oh you should put bleachers in the back for the short peasants oh the, i'm awkward ah! yeah I, this drove me up a wall i remember like watching it so i watched it yesterday and i was like oh Camilla Cabello is about to do something really annoying. Sense memory. I remember this. Trauma response. The trauma <laughs> response. I was like, I think I've seen this film before. I literally have. And, and I didn't like the ending. Like and I did not exile. like the ending. Yeah. And I was like, what does she do right here? That's so, like, I can't, what is the most annoying? She, is she exceeded with flying colors what she did? <laughs> But like, girl, get like get off of him. Like, yeah, what? So stupid. Did Did you bored yesterday? Why are you making this character so fucking stupid? Yeah, yeah. It's like I know I know people like to hate on like Jess from New Girl, but I and I'm sure it's a sitcom. Like, not every episode's equal, but like, she was adorkable and dorky within reason. This Mm -hmm. is incredibly, incredibly dumb. And also that was 2013 when it ended, something like that. Like it was many years ago at this point. Uh, So it's like, I don't know. Robert's into it. He basically creams his pants. He's like... (laughs) No, yeah. <laughs> you're like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. <laughs> you're, like, you're on the balcony disrespecting my parents and my lineage <laughs> you whiz sign me up step on me exactly. mommy step on my step grandpa on me, mommy because <laughs> <laughs> there's also a scene where he in the where he's singing somebody to love and he like look and his sister's like dude and i'm like is it like is he asking his sister to find him someone to love is he their relationship their sibling dynamic weird Weird, and this movie did, truly did not give a fuck about. I'm like, I think he no. hates his sister. I'm kind of glad that it didn't give a fuck about it because I yeah. simply didn't. I couldn't <laughs> deal with like a plot. There's too no. many. Another like, plot. No. But this don't movie need it. Is, they're gonna sing. They're gonna sing a song. I don't together. care if they give each other the most confusing, <laughs> menacing look at each other. I don't care to unpack that. They're, they're gonna sing scene. "Break Free" <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> for no reason. My God. Uh, so 
Okay, check in one. Yeah, you know, we did this with our other Cinderella adaptation. Where are we at with the Perot story? Again, father's dead instead of inactive. Mm -hmm. uh, stepmother, is she the main antagonist? Is it the king? Is it a man versus society type story? Uh, woman versus history, you know? Yeah, I don't... Stepsisters I don't are neither fully ugly or evil. They're more awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're aware of their mother being mean to her. Yeah. But they're yeah. not super mean to her themselves at all. No. No. They, they are very neutral to her. Uh, stepmother wants Cinderella to be married and get a husband. This is very different. Usually it's like, she's the free help. Let's keep her in the basement. She, in a way, sees Cinderella as a burden, which is still a form of abuse, but, like, as another child that she needs to marry off. Yes, and she's yeah. kind of, she's educating her, quote-unquote, like she is her her biological daughters, but it's, yeah, she's not like, oh, I'm going to keep you forever because you're free help. She's literally like, I got to get rid of you. Yeah. Um, they explain her name, you know, like in the fairy tale. Um, the, there's a, I forgot to mention, there's a scene where because he creams his pants watching her, he's like, the ball has to be open to everyone of all classes. And yeah. the king's like, okay. And then Gwen's like, you won't even let me have a seat at the table. Cause she like, has to take a seat. literally, just like on the nose. There's so much yeah. on the nose. They were like, they wrote that and they were like, we'll fix it later. <laughs> we'll, fix it it <laughs> we'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. And the poor editor was like, "What do you want? What do you want me? To what do you want me to?" You fix? literally had the actor like... say this line. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the in the Perot story, right? It was women of meat. Like it was, it was not all women. It was only certain wealthy women. So this kind of falls again with the modern trope, which is this. There's a parallel scene in the 2015 Cinderella about mm -hmm. opening up the ball uh again mm -hmm. the prince sees her for before the ball he sees her in her rags he knows who she is and uh you know cinderella isn't tech canonically like textually being abused by her family in the same way she hangs out in the basement and gets more of like an emotional cold abuse than like yeah. the very visceral real fear you see in the, the fairy tale, but just in the di animated Disney, like you see it in yeah. her eyes of like how much she is scared of these people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of where we are, you know, is this as an adaptation. So right now, kind of fairly close. Um, they give the protagonist a clear want, you know, uh, different. That's different. Um, but, you know, we start to diverge. We got stepsisters doing the laundry. Wild they're she's like, like why are we doing cinderella work and she's like this is what happens if you're not a material girl uh and then she sings vogue, vogue. <laughs> <laughs> she's like this is how you win a prince at the ball <laughs> uh, material girl is such an obvious choice but it's she sings it so good i know yeah. it's not like it's 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 so not the choice of like you have a Dina Menzel on set. You better make the song count. But they, I don't know. Material I like girl, it. A Dina Menzel <laughs> yeah. I stream. I <laughs> yeah, like it. I listen. Yeah. 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 It's a and, pop for sure. Because there's there's a hot farm boy doing flips and they're like. Right. It doesn't well, matter that he's too some. Well, yeah. And like, why was he in on it? Why was he like. Why, like, I feel like they were talking down at singing down at him, but he was like still like, <laughs> in, and, like you know, into it. Yeah, the real feminist message of this film is that all men secretly have a domination fetish. They're like, tell me I'm mm. poor, sit on my ancestors' legacy, right? <laughs> and I'll do a backflip. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, there you go. That's yeah. the real subversion. They just yeah. want to be spit on. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, this, this thing was so weird i was like i looked down for one second and this woman and her daughters singing to this right. hot farm guy i'm like okay this is gonna come up again it doesn't no to also like i don't know your neighbor like your next door <laughs> neighbor that you already have like a pre-established relationship with i would imagine 
that like right. why are you doing like this isn't just a stranger you realize that right I think this is a tuesday i think this happens <laughs> a lot yeah they're like okay it is i know this game he requested material girl i think that's what it is right yeah <laughs> you sing madonna i do backflips we our relationship is easy <laughs> easy which i think it's a missed opportunity for them to have cut from the laundry to them being dolled up for the ball a makeover mm. montage, if you will. Like they're wearing fancy things or like she's trying to buy them the fancy things, maybe she can't afford them and they're singing Material Girl. I think mm. so many times the numbers like stop and keep us in one place. And what one of the things about, that's fun about the opening number is it uses film to its advantage and pops yeah. to different locations and we get this like sweeping thing and then all the other numbers are like stage where we stop, we're on set. You know, yeah. it doesn't yeah. like use it to move the story forward. Um uh, you know, meanwhile, Prince Robert, he's dressing as a pirate, having gay banter with his best friend, beautiful human, his words, not mine, Wilbur. Mm -hmm. I don't mean that I'm not against Wilbur. I'm just, you know, shipping them. Um, uh, <laughs> and he's like, you look like a pirate. And you have yeah. bats in your belfry. Yep. Yeah. That's and a conversation that goes on too long. Yeah, it's yeah, no. really an unnecessary no. scene. Mm -hmm. yeah like what i don't think like if he was going out in disguise like we saw we saw the jizz earlier so it's like oh <laughs> <laughs> exactly yep mm -hmm. he wants to see her shit on his legacy again and she does yep. uh to his face to his face even hotter uh <laughs> He, he's on craigslist looking for this uh he's like well, craigslist which does up. exist in this timeline like I, I i have all means to believe that mm -hmm. the internet exists yes. oh yeah yeah I yeah mean, cinderella is a reddit troll yeah. i believe right. that <laughs> yeah there's wind there's alternative energies have been developed uh which okay windmills that's they use that this time period. Okay. Anyways, so right. they're even though she wants to destroy the planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she the Bay, oh, is the one who wants coal. It's her dream. Uh <laughs> she is trying to sell her dress, and they're all laughing at her. She's a thief, she's disrespecting society. Uh, and he's like, maybe lower your price. And she's like, you know, I'm selling this, you know, women should be able to run a business. We give girls run who run the world girls, girls you know, yep. right, right, strong right. enough to bear the children. Uh, and she loves commerce because he's like, oh, what's this? He's like, it's my mom's brooch. Uh, I didn't know her, but I like to think she'd rather have my dreams than her brooch. So it's like family heirlooms. Nothing, doesn't matter. They don't beat commerce. Well, you know why it doesn't matter to her is because it didn't matter to the writer <laughs> that she had a mom once or, or a dad. A dad. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. or that she, you know, has a background. She's just Cinderella. No, she spawned. Yeah. She did it. Yeah. She spawned. <laughs> she on that basement to destroy the planet. Uh, so, uh, I just, I always think of this is a deep cut, but there is a Studio C skit. Where they sing a song about women can girls can do anything that they want to, uh, even like buy a quesalupa at Taco Bell. It's like a, supposed to be a feminist song, and it's actually an ad for quesalupas at Taco oh, that's Bell. And it's like crunchy cheese, and that's what she's like. Girls can do anything, and like they can get a quesalupa. And I think that's Taco that's Bell. actually fourth wave feminism. That's, yeah, that's what we're that's this movie girls can work for Amazon. They can be in a car, <laughs> right. thing, yeah. putting things in a in your boxes um so uh, he buys the dress from her yeah after or before we get we get another bad rap oh that happens first oh yeah he talks about the ball he wraps oh, up the ball God. oh that, yeah and she's like the king's idiot son serves no real function uh he gets banged by his mom on the tush tush okay <laughs> here's what i think Stop i think me, she mommy. She just fucking made up this rumor. I don't think this is a rumor. Again, Reddit troll. Reddit troll. Right. I think she just fucking made this up in the town square. Said it to this guy. She's like, oh, that'll catch up. Yeah. And, he, and it does wow. because he fucking announces it at the ball. And he's like, oh, no, that definitely her. doesn't that doesn't happen. And he's she's like, mm, I feel like it does. A, a troll yep. would know that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, 
what a missed opportunity for that to be the reason she finds out he's the prince. <laughs> like, my mom doesn't spank me. Yeah. She knows yeah. the fetish that's in. Mm-hmm. In this world, it's not feet. Like, in, that st- in the Cinderella cat. Yep. Domination. Um, Spanking. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he buys the dress and is like, you need to go to the Balton Network. Because she doesn't care about meeting the little Spank Spank boy mm-hmm. and dating him. Spanky. Uh, <laughs> Spanky. <laughs> Prince Spanky. She's like, he's like, oh, but you can go and like network with people. He's yeah. Like, and he's, she's like, oh, okay. And right. she's happy. Again, also, like he was like, oh, there's going to be a lot of people there with cash to spend. And I'm like, cash i've only seen you guys like use coins Coins. like what does the does the creator of this world even know where we are right now no No. this movie really has no time or place not even like a a, like a we're in vague fairy tale because there's enough references to modern things we're like and things like coal so it's like we've had the industrial revolution i guess like where are we you know, whereas, like, I didn't ask that in, like, the Brandy Cinderella. I was right. just like, oh, we're in fairy tale land. Yeah. You know, like, nothing right. really. Yeah. There's too many questions being had. Yeah. I didn't ask how a white man and a Whoopi Goldberg, who once played Carbon Timido, had and an Asian a Whoopi song. Goldberg <laughs> and her own species. <laughs> her own species. <laughs> like, in that, it's like, you're just like, yeah, that's what's happening in this movie. Yeah, it's here. Right. It's like I have so many questions. Um, yeah. So uh, she uses the money to get new materials for a dress. Meanwhile, so she's planning to make a new dress for the ball. Gwen, you know, wants to be queen. Robert is, you know, desiring her. The queen is depressed, painting. Uh, Vivian's prepping her daughters for the ball, and we have a song that when you think of, you think this belongs in a Cinderella jukebox musical. Am I wrong? Am I wrong, which by all means necessary, and I'm, maybe you'll agree with me. I'm sure you do. You do. This felt like end of act one. You look at the timestamp of am I wrong? And it's like, maybe only like what? 30 minutes in? <laughs> 45? It's like it's like less than halfway through the movie. Yeah. Like, why is it coming in so early? Yeah, this this the pacing of like where the ball is, yeah, is actually like I think that's very whenever you adapt Cinderella, like that's your thing. It's like is the ball the end goal? Like in the animated movie, it's kind of like yeah. now we're at the end, or is it a middle point? Is it the beginning? You know, like where the ball goes is key, and I, I don't think they knew that. Yeah, because it does feel like an act one because it's like you're it's this movie's one day more, <laughs> right? Right? Yeah, yeah. it's like. Why is everybody singing? I don't even care about <laughs> most of these people. Yeah. 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 But we we get Thomas making a visit and kind of ogling Cinderella. Uh, um, and sh- she makes a new pink dress, another ugly dress. Um, and uh, then she walks in and the stepsisters are like, oh, we don't stand a chance. And Vivian's like, no, uh, you can't go. You're already betrothed. I should have told you earlier, but Thomas asked to marry you. What does she say? She's like, I'm eating a muffin and going to bed. I was like, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, Vivian ruins the dress. Throws and... ink on it. And, yeah. And it is, it's like, if we're going to have that scene, like the animated dress destruction scene is so visceral and she works oh my so God. hard to I get it. I was thinking about that. And, and it's I was like, yeah. You feel okay. crushed and defeated, and this is like, like, and this should mean more because she made it herself. Whereas well, this, and, her friends made it in the animated one. Yeah. She made it herself, and it's ruined. And she's just like, and she be Cinderella straighting a lot of those those dresses that I'm yeah. like, she be making a lot of those fashion choices that I'm like, okay, inks thrown at your dress. It's a do or die moment do something with this girl like i don't want to give you a fucking business if you don't know what to do once in ink falls on the dress i don't know that and Uh. also it feels like it's not necessary for her to do that because then she's also like yeah but i betrothed you to thomas so you can't even go to the ball there's no point yeah so it's like why even throw the ink (laughs) it's just like what are you trying to prove at this point Adele. Yeah, like she, 
Yeah. Like <laughs> she, I guess she wants to like crush her, but I feel like, I don't know, being told that I was just betrothed to someone that I find absolutely vile and I don't have any control over that feels worse than a dress that I just made getting a stain on it. Yeah. I don't um, know. And, and this is, they do this thing where they cut from it to the mice seeing, oh, Never the butterfly is transforming. You're, you're getting rid of all of that good tension because to push us into her song. And yeah. they're like, nope, we got to go to James Corden because, and his mice. Yeah, because if you think yeah. of the animated one where she like runs a block and yeah. like weeps. Throws and basically, herself in the garden. She's basically <laughs> like having a suicidal ideation. Like there's yeah. nothing left to believe in. Mm -hmm. And it's like a reprise of the song from earlier and the fairy godmother shows up. So they are very intentionally following a lot of Disney beats, but doing them poorly. So then it's like, you instead of making it your own, you're just giving us a less interesting version because it cuts. Yeah. She's not even, she changed. She had time yeah, to she, change before singing we don't, like sad we reprise. We don't get her moment of being in that dress. They should have kept her in that dress that like, okay, if it's, if she's really heartbroken that that dress got ruined, she should still be in that dress when finally the fairy godmother comes up yeah. because it's just like. It's, I think yeah. they were scared to let her like cry and be like so like super vulnerable in that moment because they, they didn't dissolve want her to look the weak. tension and yeah. she doesn't get her moment of aftermath. And it's like, that's just bad screenwriting at that yeah. point. Uh, I that's mean, right. I know you I wrote have an MFA. I know you wrote my dad's <laughs> favorite movie, Pitch Perfect, but right, yeah. your parents yeah. get great it won't, shout it won't save something. you this time. It won't no. save you this time. Yeah. Yeah. So the 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 butterfly transforms into Fab G, who of course can says, I just say work every time that they said Fab G, it was so close. I, every time they said it, I was like, it sounds like you're almost saying a slur. Yeah. It, <laughs> Oh my right? god, yeah. Yeah, it's a little it's too like, close. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what did you just say? <laughs> yeah. That's... Uh God. Okay. But so yeah. this is where the whole um transforming the dress is supposed to happen. This number is too long without any magic happening to her. Like yeah. like Billy Porter is waving the wand. There's sprinkles happening. And he's like, mm -hmm, that's right. I'm singing this song. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> where is her magic? Can we start yeah. transforming her? Yeah. No, yeah. we can't. We have to wait. We have to wait. Again, it's like they don't take advantage of the visualness of the medium. And the, it's like they just, he stands there and he sings. He's fabulous. He's, he's Fab G. He's <laughs> Sorry? So I was going to say it. <laughs> Sorry. That might get me canceled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, he is like, okay, you you know, you need footmen, you need a dress. So he makes a dress. Or first he puts her in a pantsuit. And she's like, oh, <gasps> this is different. And he's like, I used to want to be a businesswoman. I gagged. Uh, and he, that was for the trailer, for sure. That was for the YouTube, like, before you can skip the ad, you know? <laughs> uh, and he saw, he, which I love this idea. He summons, like, one of her concepts to make a dress. That's sure. perfect. Amazing. The transformation, okay, I mean, nothing can ever, like, the Disney animated is such an iconic transformation. I think you're always gonna, like, that's gonna be a tough, tough competition. Mm -hmm. um, but he does, her hair, she's, her, he doesn't do her hair. Nope, still a braid, uh, and I'm like, hmm, the braid. missed opportunity. Yeah. Wait, did she ever change did out of she that? Ever braid? get out of the braid? No, no. The, she did not wash her hair once. The braid was was the, that was a contract agreement, and I was like, yeah. probably. I'm doing this movie. I'm gonna be braided. Her hair is different at the end. I think it's like half up, half down. Oh, that's true. the only time it's different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. But the same, no, so he gives her the glass shoes. He uses magic to make them more comfortable. We get that bit. Uh, he turns the mice into footmen. And she says, oh, I always thought you were girls. Because mice are girls and rats are boys. Stupid line. It's a classic line. thing I always Stupid. say. It's a classic thing I always say. <laughs> it's like Parks and Rec already did the dogs and cats thing. Yes. Right. It's No one's saying rat. Like, is anybody saying that? 
No. No. <laughs> this this girl in her basement. Uh, and there's a lot of her doing like the awkward head tilt thing, like the almost baby don't hurt me SNL sketch. <laughs> and he, apparently the carriage, you know, this is a Wikipedia fun fact. So take with a grain of salt. Apparently the carriage was supposed to be a Mercedes Benz sponsorship because it has like the horses on it. The horse. Oh. Um, but which that is, fell through. Yeah. Well, I think it is technically a sponsorship oh. because it has the horse, the, the logo thing on the side. Okay. Of the band. I, I mean, it is the it most unmemorable Cinderella coach. I was at the car dealership earlier, and I was like, eh, yeah. I don't know. I have a Mercedes. Not they really haven't made much of an impression on me. Um. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a horses appear more... out of a crate. Yeah. She just turns a crate into a coach. No yeah. pumpkin. Uh, so this is our next sure. check in. <laughs> so the reason she can't go is because she's betrothed, not because they hate her. Uh, there's no scene of her asking to go and being refused ahead of time. Oh, uh, yeah. The prince, like she does in both Brandy and Animated, the prince is waiting for her specifically, mm-hmm. which is something from the 2015 one. And then uh, the fairy godparent is connected to something she did. She saved the caterpillar. She showed kindness. So there's saved a, the cat or pillar. Her pillar. The there's pillar. an origin. Uh, there's no like the the pro fairy tale has more of them kind of going through this process together and like most adaptations it tends to rely on just the wave of the wand, but it, the no pumpkin is a little bewildering. It's a small detail. I don't think it's essential, but why? Hmm. Why no pumpkin? We will why never a know. Crate? The, the crate was, was the, like so. was the crate yeah. important? No. Like was it like a an heirloom or something? No, my I could grandmother have. loved this crate. <laughs> I had a grandmother once, but she's dead too. <laughs> yeah, this this girl I literally has have no... such water. <laughs> <laughs> water all over my floor. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I swallowed the choke. You okay? This hasn't happened since like the Glee boot. Finale. Um, I like snorted all that wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, I don't remember what we're talking about. That was too funny. Um, uh, the we're we're at the ball now. Yeah, you let's, know, let's James Corden tries to sing a lot, and they're like, "It's awkward." And we're like, "We know, but he's here." Do you um, know who the other two people were? No, no, right? It's like kind of like distracting that like one of them is James Corden, and the other two are. Other not people, people that you recognize yeah and they gave them so much screen time that you would as think. humans that it would be like i mean maybe they're like maybe they're famous british comedians mm. or something that like as americans we don't recognize True. it's not for um, us yeah but maybe that's it, what it as is. americans isn't everything kind of for us <laughs> kind of yeah especially <laughs> this movie this movie is definitely right. for americans and so to put like <laughs> deep cut to Americans deep cut uh yeah. British comedians that are friends with James Corden. Yeah, that hmm. that's sort of what I'm assuming. Okay. Um Colin's disappearing into Yeah, Colin's like going Prince into Robert. The void. <laughs> <laughs> I just just cuz there's water in my, the cat, my cat is looking at me like what? <laughs> <laughs> She's actually like if I if I reach for his cross it's roughly kind of where she is. Um nice. <laughs> Yeah, I plan that. All right. So Queen bored at the ball. Uh, Gwen can't read the room and wants to talk about her politics. Uh, and she <laughs> says, no one cares "Read the about. room, darling." Um, but she's right. like, "We have to sit here and not dance." And he's like, "This is about me, not you." He sucks, the king. Um, yeah. Prince shows up, and all these women who I'm going to say it, I think we need to talk about. They're all dressed better than Cinderella. Oh, no. they're, oh they're sexy. Oh yeah, they have way they're... more inventive, interesting dresses. Right. Yep. And she hers, the it's like the it's strapless, but it doesn't even remotely fit her on top. Like it's like it, very obviously hanging loosely from her. Can we all it, just come out with it? We hate this woman. We hate her. <laughs> destroying the earth. No, I do I do feel like I feel in I actually it, I'm like, why did they Camilla Cabello is a Not, beautiful person. Yeah, sure. I feel yes. like it'd be so yeah. easy to dress her in a way that would accentuate what she's got going on. Exactly. And they don't. Yeah, that's why I, I, like, I agree. They really don't. Who's screwing you over this way? 
Like yeah. there's a set nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> Truly. It's the costume you you designer. always need one. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, it's the the diaper pants, the loose bodice. <laughs> yeah. Um so the prince shows up and we get a, a fun mashup in a weird way. Oh, no, that's great. Of what a man, the maiden singing that, uh, which is funny because they don't know him, and then said him singing Seven Nation Army with his bros as we do like a flirt dance, like rock. Yes. Ballroom. I think the thing that I am so stunned by in this movie is that not only is it just jukebox musical, but it is literally jukebox. Any song that you can think of is in this jukebox. There's it's no glee. like discernible era. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, Whereas like, you know, uh, you know, Green Day, it's all Green Day songs, you know, it's like, there's no theme. They just, they start with, you know, some Janet Jackson, they've got Salt and Peppa and yeah. uh, what is it? The um, oh Seven Nation Army. Oh my God. Who is that? The Black Keys? Uh, I think so. Uh, yeah. I, think I mean, so. no one but, knows. Like, it's, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> everywhere. Coming yeah. from everywhere. It is literally glee and it's, it's if, stunning, I guess. You could never afford to do this, but the most Cinderella coded discography is Taylor Swift. Mm. You know, like oh, she has yeah. Enchanted, so Cinderella, Bejeweled, literally has Cinderella music video, which wasn't out at this time, but like even just the Speak Now album with Mean and like it's like she has so many. Yeah. Like she kind of gives herself a princess narrative in her mm. songs, you know, so it makes sense. Um, because I have a thing, like pop stars are all different characters. Taylor Swift is Cinderella, Rihanna is Persephone, you know, like Regina Spector is Snow White. Like that's just like we who all they agree. Are. Yeah. Yeah. We're all on the same way. We're, all, we're all in agreement. Katy Perry and Nicki Minaj are Aphrodite. Yeah. Um oh, okay. yeah. Um I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh so she shows up to and she runs into Vivian and they talk about the shoes and because Vivian, oh, they don't recognize about, her. Yes. The whole, this was just a cop out. Uh, Fab G. <laughs> Enunciating <laughs> clearly. Done. Was, <laughs> was like, uh, okay, I'm going to make sure that no one can recognize you so you can have a great time. And she's like, yeah, but I'm there to see someone specific. He's like, Okay, so only that person will recognize. I was like, that Pop specific, out. no name given, no description, right? No, that's clearly your magic is just, whew, it works. Yeah, that no, but it runs out at midnight. We do get the classic midnight timetable. Sure. Um, uh, which is funny because if you notice from the story we told earlier today, she just left when she wanted to. There's <laughs> nothing, Good nothing making her leave. Mm. She's just being stalked. Yeah. Uh, so she meets, goes up on the balcony and meets Queen Tatiana. She says, oh, sorry, your highness. And she's like, oh, that was the man I murdered to get this crown. Like, so girl, you are willingly giving that information to anybody that <laughs> yeah. wants it. She's, she's like, proud. I did a bloody coup and I want you to know, girl, <laughs> slay. <laughs> girl, slay, yes. <laughs> oh, God. that This woman, this queen, yeah, mm -hmm. she is absolutely giving... NPC and a video game. <laughs> yes! She is just like, meet me in the village tomorrow at 3 p.m. Yep. And you try to interact with her before 3 p.m. And she's like, I'll see you at 3 p.m. Yep, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Turns away. <laughs> she's, well, okay. She also, because she's like, who designed that? I love the dress. And I'm like, yeah, have you talked to one of those girls downstairs? But uh, right. she's like, oh, it's don't a, go downstairs. It's a me, me, who I did. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. it goes on for way too long. It's not just, oh, sorry, me? Have you ever I had think... a dream? <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Have you ever have a, a dream? And a, a dream? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's exactly. One, one, yes. I think they were like, okay, Camilla, just go, just go and we'll cut when we get the clip that we want. And the other was like, <laughs> I'm putting all of this in. <laughs> not the same, it. the same I, enemy. Yeah, movie hated her i i yeah. think you're right they are not doing her a service because you know what i actually think she did good with what she was given i actually thought she was very charming for what little they gave her in the script and yeah i 
think yeah. everyone hated her. Was this movie not? I think this movie was nominated for like best popular movie at the Oscar or that I one year. That so that I think that was like the first year they did that. Right. Wait, this was nominated for that. I it, think it, so. it does have an Oscar nomination. I feel. I'm I'm putting so much onus on on y'all to <laughs> okay, Hannah. To do uh, my Google, Google that while I go through this this plot. I'm doing uh, it. And the biggest joke I ever is told. We're trying to Amazon be Cinderella. Yeah, fan favorite at the Academy Awards. Yes, that, that is it won it. Cry. It won. I think Wait, so. This Hold movie on. won it. No, that can't be. Please. <laughs> okay, Screen Rant literally this says Oscar's fan favorite award goes wrong as twenty one. T- Cinderella takes the lead. Did they? Because if Sandy Powell didn't get best costumes for the 2015 Cinderella. And this got fan favorite. Uh, Who's the fans? (laughs) Where are they? (laughs) Because honestly. Uh, You guys, let's, let's keep going. Okay, so she sees trying to run away. Uh. And she knocks over the instruments and he uh, sees her and is like, oh, the girl, because he's giving a speech about what she said about him and being spanked on the tush tush. And he loves his mom, who's a strong woman. And he's like, oh, it's you. And she's like, you didn't tell me you were the prince. You let me like make up rumors about you to your face. And then you just spread them to the whole kingdom. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. But like, look, and then I have something to show you. And Gwen reveals She's wearing that puce dress. That, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're like, oh, and she's like, my dress is on the princess. Oh my gosh. And then he's like, can you dance? And uh, they dance to Ed Sheeran's Perfect, which does have Cinderella vibes, not at the same level as Taylor Swift's Enchanted. But uh, I do. For the record. For the record. And also for the record, it was Trin Lavelle, I think, that said this in her review of this movie. I always saw it when, back when this movie came out. She said, if, if I'm at a ball and they play Ed Sheeran, I'm leaving. It's not the ball. I'm for not me. leaving that ball. <laughs> okay, it was a nominee. It did not win. Okay. What did it do happen to know the winner? It, it's going to take me a second. Okay. I'm so sorry. No, because yeah. now I need to know. <laughs> So they're, they're, they they dance, and I do think, I think most of the chemistry and cuteness is coming from him, but it's, they have some nice chemistry. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, a little bit later, they have their, like, spicy kiss moment. Yeah, because... almost kiss moment, and I, I think it's, they're selling it, I think. Yeah, they, they walk off alone, and the mice talk about pissing and clapping, and Which... we... Why did the mice, rats, mice, mice, mice? They're mice. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. she mice... thought they were girls. Because yeah. mice right. are girls, rats are boys. Yeah, I've learned that from this movie. Um, they, James Corden was like, "Oh, I just peed out of my front front tail." tail. And I'm yeah. like, "Wait a minute, are you trying to like insult the audience member by like trying to inform them by that mice don't have." genitalia <laughs> male well, mice have penises right like what the fuck like what is even the joke here anyway they just wanted they to say penis they, they have... wanted to imply penis yep, yeah they um, Cinderella. at any cause <laughs> they definitely have genitals so, <laughs> that yep. was part of his pitch he's like yeah. with Cinderella it's, too much musical. it's a dick joke <laughs> Jake Cannon's like I'll write it uh and so they they're going they're tra- doing like oh look at the fountain and uh he's like oh where my coat you know they're doing this little blah blah talk that's definitely improvised and then uh he plays the piano he's like i have depth marry yep. me i've chosen you i choose you to be my queen he doesn't Isn't say this okay no this is the scene that drove me insane because he talks about like how hard it is to be a prince, right? Or yeah, he later? saw his dad go off to war, and like yeah. that's why he wants to be king because it's like worth his legacy, but it's hard to have everyone look at you all the time. Yeah, I feel like you don't fit into the box you're born into. He's mm-hmm. like, yeah, oh god, like my life is so hard. She's like, yeah, my parents are dead, and then that's it. That's all <laughs> she gets. And I was like, this movie is called Cinderella. And that's this character's name. And she gets nothing. 
It's insane. Well, she's like, you know my story. My name's Cinderella. <laughs> Yeah, like this movie is relying so much on the audience to be like, you know, Cinderella, let's talk about all these other tertiary <laughs> characters, give them depth. And it's like, no, that's yeah. not how this works. I would say the Cinderella in Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister has a lot more development. <laughs> than the main character in this Cinderella movie. So he, they, they're like, you're going to be my wife. It's it, She's like, but what about my work? Um, and he's like, oh, well, women have a prescribed role, but you would have the best people make dresses for you. She's like, but I'm a dressmaker. She's like, if it's between a crown and you or me, I choose me. Yeah. Sorry to this man. Sorry to this man, which fair, because he just, he didn't say, will you marry me? He said, I choose you. I choose Mm. you and no, you don't get to pursue your dreams. Yeah. And so they sing perfect again, almost kiss midnight. I would like to, okay, quick sidebar, because we are running, so I don't want to spend too long on this. Queens famously dictate fashion. Marie Antoinette was famous for this. Queens dictate fashion. (laughs) Queens dictate fashion. Look at those little Queen Elizabeth outfits. No, Marie Antoinette did this, like her, like petite train on, like cottagecore thing was like a big thing. And like her big hair and big dresses. We've seen the Kirsten Dunst movie. Mm -hmm. Isabeau of Bavaria, Princess Cece of Austria, basically invented working out, you know, like all these like dictating fashion is like a big thing that Queens did in court. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, by that it's like we can be like what she loves is commerce not Mm -hmm. fashion yeah that makes sense which is a nitpick but i just had to we can go down that cul-de-sac and let's get back to the most horrifying image in the movie it's midnight she's (laughs) fleeing the prince helps her flee because the king's trying to announce that she's the queen she throws a shoe at wilbur they run away and then we get the biggest james corden jump scare of all time (laughs) <laughs> as they're they're running away midnight's tolling and then he becomes mouth, human head on my body mm-hmm. for again a full like 45 seconds and it's that's 50 insane. seconds too long yeah yeah right <laughs> <laughs> screaming at each other and uh so now end of midnight back to regular life so we are our, our next check-in so cinderella has a clear goal for when to go to the ball it's for networking purposes she yeah. rejects the prince and flees more because she doesn't want to be recognized by Vivian than like being seen in her rags. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh it's only one night at the ball, unlike the fairy tale, and she throws the slipper instead of loses it. Yeah. Um that's her uh, being really active. She's not being passive. Yeah. Uh <laughs> so the queen is sympath- sympathetic to Robert because the king's like, How dare you do this? And he's like, The girl I chose didn't chose me. And she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. And he's like, You're gonna marry Princess Laura. And the Gwen is like, what about war profiteering and catapults? And he's like, like shut, shut up. up. And then the queen is like, we all need to sleep. And he's like, shut your whore mouth, basically. Right. Basically. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you don't talk to many driver the light of Colin's life that way. Uh, and the, and he's, yeah, he's just, he's the real, if Cinderella's story of abuse, the abuse in the royal family. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, so Ella's back home pretending to be sick. Vivian, and comes- she gets away with it. Yeah, this Cinderella, Mm-mm. she, she would not get away uh, with that. No, um, she Vivian's like, Oh, you know, we went to the ball, some mystery girl turned his head, we didn't stand a chance. A mother can dream, you know, I'm hard on you because mm-hmm. it'd be cruel to let you believe you could be something you aren't. I was a piano prodigy and I went to study. And my husband said that real wives didn't do that. So he left me and my daughters. Giving so much more Depth. layers. Layers. To... Which she didn't this... know because this Camilla. The, the movie's this Cinderella... not called Vivian. The movie's <laughs> no. Not called... no. It's not this called Cinderella. Right. It's like, so I uninvested just... in her family life that it's like, I'm like, you didn't know that like her first husband left her? Right. That's the, and also the the piano of it all. Yeah. There is a scene we do get piano scoring in the background at one point. I was like, oh, it's Vivian. Because I've seen the movie before. I was like, oh. So yeah. I just like they're they're giving depth to our antagonist who, who's not supposed to just be an antagonist. She's an abuser. 
Yes. Right. And so very it's much just similar. Like, Kate Blanchett and Angelica Houston get similar scenes. It's it's just like I don't care because this movie is not called Vivian. <laughs> it's just like, and it's I don't know. To me, it doesn't add anything because again, I don't care. And uh she, at this point, I was just frustrated because I was like, I'm actually kind so of on? rooting for Camila Cabello. And also her version of Cinderella because I'm like, they're not giving her anything. Like, this sucks for her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she, Cause she talks about, oh, I might be in love with Prince Robert to the mice. And she's like, but I have to follow my dreams. I choose me. And the mice like spell it out for us to be super obvious um, uh-huh. and say, oh, how can you fall in love so qu- quick? Um, and it's like, oh my God. So, uh, yeah. Either they, buy into the fairy tale or not, K. Cannon. I'm sorry. <laughs> so they right. for the, once. James yeah. Corden for once in your life, K. Cannon. No, so James Corden Mouse knocks the slipper over and Vivian's like, oh, it was you. I don't know how, but you're with the the you the prince wants to marry you. He chose you. She's like, I said no. And she's like, change your mind. Like, for, if not for you, for us, because she's like, we don't want to be starving. You know, again, this is very similar to a Kate Blanchett version scene. Uh, and she's like, no, I choose my dreams. And she's like, well, I'm going to take you to Thomas. Get a merry, horny vegetable man. Right. Uh, and uh, she sings Dream Girl. Not the from Dream Girl. She sings the original song. The world doesn't need another Dream Girl. This that was is like... the original song? This is Million to One and this are original, yeah. Yeah, okay. I was listening to this and I was like, okay, this is a demon cell saying like, we don't need a Dream Girls re- revival. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, girl, like, don't, don't be saying this. No, yeah. don't no say one that. Wants to hear that. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. So a million to one, I thought was like, fine. Yeah. This, no, didn't like it. Unimpressionable. Because yeah. I remember like going into this movie the second time, I was like, okay, I remember that Adina Menzel sings Material Girl, but I also remember that she sings another song but I can't place it. And I'm like, it was unimpressionable, I guess. And then I got to it and I was like, oh yeah, there it is. Uh, it, yep. <laughs> just, I think it's the fact that the main hook, not just a secondary line, the main hook lyric isn't really grammatically like the world doesn't need another, is it dream comma girl? The world doesn't <laughs> another need a dream girl. Dream girl. <laughs> or yeah. is she saying dream? It's not saying the world doesn't need another dreamer. It's like yeah. dream girl. Right. It's like none of it a, makes sense. That's no. the the term dream girl is used to mean oh you're a dream girl the girl you want to be with. Mm, so it's like what right. is yeah there's so many meanings to <laughs> yeah, that yeah and it's not the one that I they're... thought it was the comma girl one <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need a dream, dream girl. girl yeah uh, that's what I thought mm. <laughs> wash your face girl and uh, yep. all the women in those piece are contributing their. They're mad at the patriarchy. They're singing about corsets are too high, t- high and tight. Marry it or bury your feelings. This is the feminist anthem. How does that feel to you? How did do you feel anthemed? Do you feel like this was I, Glee season two episode anthem? I literally was like, I I was confused about the grammar, and I was like, okay, I get what they're doing. Um, cool. That's it. Because again, I was like, why am I learning about Vivian? We're doing check in five. Okay. So there's no search, immediate search for the slipper based on having the slipper. And the stepmother wants her to be with the prince. Cinderella is the one saying no. Uh, that's so that's different. That's different. It's the twisty, twisty. So I bet you're wondering about uh, if Minnie Driver, the light of Colin's life, can fence. I was. Uh, I was wondering, what is her her hobby? Yeah. Well, we, she already has painting. <laughs> she has painting. And she has being fencing. being greedy. <laughs> <laughs> and so we get this whole subplot. And I'm going to sum up the whole thing in what, just because, I mean, I I was like very optimistic when we were going to do this in two hours that I was like, it's us and Gleek of the Week. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> so the the... He, they're fencing and she's I mean she looks cool doing it I mean again it's Minnie Driver light of my life but uh, he comes in and is like why are you mad at me is it because I yelled at you and she's like yeah like he Robert doesn't believe in love because he sees our marriage like it used to be good and now like you're so concerned with your legacy that you don't care about me you used to sing to me in your terrible voice 
And so he has a change of heart. And then later we see him sing to her publicly, badly. Cringe. It's a Pierce Brosnan can't sing joke. And she's like, oh, my pig headed husband. And it's like, this does not make up. No. No. But we get that. That's what time of this two hour epic goes to. We can uh, attribute that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we didn't get the stepsister singing royals, but we got this. So the the king is like, you know what? Go find the girl with the slipper and marry her. I was like, well, she already said no. Right. Yeah. I was um, like, well, how's that going to work? Well, he also was like, I'm not going to require you to be king, essentially. He's like, yeah. Do, go be in love. Like, don't worry about this king stuff. Yeah. And then he's like, okay, cool. Now we can be together and, you know, yeah. You and have to worry about that stuff. We get another tra- town choir rap about Why? shoes and sons that yeah, well, we're all waiting for <laughs> uh and so he's walking around but there's no like slipper fitting motif he's just no. like do i recognize this girl it's part of the fun right of these stories is like all the women trying to fit their feet in and they boil it down to women just like showing their shoes in the town square right. it's like no Put when these I was women watching in that this, glass slipper. When I was watching this movie with my husband, Dan Schneider, we were, <laughs> he was really, really disappointed when it got to that point. Where it was like, wait a minute, what? He's like, like oh, why? Turn I this love off. that part of the yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to at least the cartoon. I know it's cartoon, but at least there was feet. Yeah. You get some heel definition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so they, so meanwhile, she's being taken away to be with Thomas, but she, I guess, off screen plot with the mice. And love they... that it's off screen. I love that we get her cleverness off screen. <laughs> if Alyssa was here, she'd be losing her mind. <laughs> She's like, it's not on screen. It doesn't count. Yep. Uh, so the the mice upset the horses. So she like tucks and rolls out of this carriage and she's running to make it to the town square. And I just want to, the queen said, Queen Tatiana was like, you meet me at four. My co- boat leaves in an hour. Right. right? right. Just Very keeping... NPC of her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keeping her time. Timeline in yeah. check. <laughs> she has an exclamation point above her head. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and so she is, he's looking for her because his friends gave him like a speech about love. And I was like, are his I thought, what? I, when I first saw this movie, I thought the speech meant that his two buddies were like dating. I was like, oh, that's going to be a, a little twist. And then I was like, no, they just did a speech about love, whatever. But uh, he's like, oh, I should have known to look for her where? I guess generic green field, the respawn zone. Uh, <laughs> respawn. <laughs> this was the field Spawn that I point. spawned in. <laughs> yep. So he is he's singing Could Have Been Me on his horse, which is playing instrumentally in the slipper thing. So it's like, was that initially going to be a song? And they cut. And then she's singing Million to One because Adina gets two, but she gets one song um <laughs> True. and so they they then they crash into each other he's like i've decided you've inspired me i'm not gonna be king i'm gonna i want to be free i'm gonna be with you i choose me and she's like great but i'm on timeline but this is the most romantic thing let's kiss okay take me to the town square i gotta meet my npc and yeah. uh they she passes her interview she looks at the stuff and it's like yes good uh, even though you technically did not sew the dress that I saw you in. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you drew it, but yeah. can you put it together? Tim you... Gunn would be very interested in that. Yeah. Right. Gunn That's and Project yeah. Runway crew. Uh, Cinderella, Amazon Cinderella 2. Mm-hmm. With Tim Gunn. <laughs> With Tim Gunn. Tim Gunn. There's a oh, whole panel. Of I want it to happen. Fab G. Fab G. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh they meet the king and queen he's like the queen's like we have pastries left over we have another wedding uh and they're like no we decided not to get married we saw the end of mama mia and we're doing that we're gonna travel the world (laughs) together i love when they said that yeah favorite line and the king is just like yeah let's make gwen the heir i could have done this this whole time i've just been shitty to my daughter this whole time yeah saying i don't make the rules i'm just the king but actually i could change the line of succession right yeah i'm um, tired <laughs> i'm tired 
<laughs> uh, yeah, and so there's an announcement that she's the heir. Everyone seems to like it, despite these being these people being appalled by the idea of a woman selling a single item. Um, yeah, which is very like we're imposing American 1950s gender roles on like a feudalist society, which would ha- had gender roles but weren't like the women in the home. Like your home was also your blacksmith shop. You know, it's like mm. yeah, but yeah. Uh, she they're like oh she's queen great um and she's queen. yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, they, she's like oh, i'll be king and they're like well technically queen and then uh they're like who are you like what are you calling yourself like no labels like we're just in love and like you need to dtr because when it comes <laughs> to boundaries when he's getting when he's getting craigslist dms from the other mommies you need to know what like what your boundaries are. are you right. in a relationship? Are you in an open you're, relationship? You're being are you friend zoned? Yeah. Real? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The queen gets her dream to be like, no, you're wrong, even though it's obviously staged, so it doesn't really mean anything. Um, because earlier she's like, I just would love to tell you you're wrong in front of everyone. Uh, and they sing Let's Get Loud. Uh the as they did choice. Which I just again, this is where the queen said she would leave an hour, her boat left in an hour from the interview so did this all happen in an hour i was thinking the same thing and i also loved that she was like and i'm never gonna return here by the way I've yeah no, there, there is i kind of am hating the vibes in this entire <laughs> town you're like yeah. i mean same same like, if you want if you want to make a deal with me it be, it's now or never girl i'm never coming back here yeah there's she's also in white which is an interesting choice for the we're not getting married angle um, yeah and it's a fun number <laughs> she and vivian make up the stepsisters are very much on her side um because it's like the prince and his bros her and her stepsisters almost like wedding parties and the girl that they didn't let drum in the opening number gets to drum yeah and that's and he's like now everyone knew her name it's ella get it right and i'm like by emphasizing that, you're undermining because we all know her as Cinderella. Yeah. Yeah. This um mm. uh we forgot to mention she sang with herself in Million to One. Oh like a, right. I'm just like Lohan you, scene. you're just like you, just <laughs> yeah. like me. Yeah. <laughs> Barbie, can't wait till we get to the Barbie movies in this podcast. Uh so I guess our final check-in. There's no shoe try on. The prince does it himself, unlike in the pro story where it's a like a footman. No wedding. She gets to be the breadwinner. He's the Nepo baby. They're so yeah. Megan and Harry coded. <laughs> um, yeah. So that is that is that movie. Um, it was a movie. <laughs> I always think of the 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 Drew, the Drew Gooden bit about the I Tanya movie where it only it a only movie. a movie. <laughs> <laughs> only I, a definitely. Movie. Yeah. Yep. What do we think of? I complain about the costumes. Are we all aligned? Do we feel differently about costumes? Or yeah, because I felt like the costumes. I just want to. I just want to <laughs> point that out as a. I think a flat as I'm saying likes for the song. Yeah, costume designer. No, I'll agree. I mean, there were things that I disliked more than the costumes <laughs> in this movie. And then, I mean, I, so did we like the music aspect? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, it's. I fine. did. I think it's, it's the most fun. Not all part. of it. Yeah, not all of it. Yeah, but like even "Let's Get Loud" was like a fun dance number. Yes. Yeah, where like fun. Adina Menzel was like, <laughs> and she was like, "Okay, I'll get loud." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I like the patriarchy being over too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I think. The one that I liked the most, I think, was Shining Star because I think Billy Porter did a great job. Even though I think like it didn't. Wait, you use said its it was time- literally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it didn't use its time very well. But I like just like if I'm just listening to it, I like the song. That's- but it doesn't use its time well in the movie. And that's still your favorite song. Yes. <laughs> Not even Material Girl. Wait, yeah, that's no, no, because I. No, I just I think that one's probably my favorite. That's, yeah, wow. that's all I, I have to say. That's crazy. And also, did you fast forward through it? No, I did not because I was. <laughs> well, here's why: 
because in Glee, I could get away with it because I'm like, okay, I get why Rachel is singing this anthem because she does this all the time. I but in this, it. I'm like, oh, maybe they're going to do something. So I didn't do it. <laughs> and they didn't do anything. I was like, I'm going to fast forward it. Uh, uh, do we root for our protagonist? We talked a lot about this Cinderella. I root for her becoming a businesswoman. I don't care about their relationship really yeah because then next it's like do we ship her and robert no. i also and i have no authority saying this i don't think she's a good actress so i think that that was like a lot of it where it was like she's not selling me being like involved no. yeah that's the thing is like on an objective thing it's like yes this girl should have a life where she doesn't have to live in a basement but it right. is kind of a you pay like Three thousand a month for that in New York. I don't know, but I mean, maybe <laughs> in a, LA doesn't have basements, okay? But uh, I, I think she was miss, missing like that emotional connection of like right. the yearning of what she wanted and why. Because I think the "I Want" song is so like generic uh, to yeah. what she wants, and like it's just like I want a business, and we don't get because I want money because I saw what happened to my mother before me and my stepmother. Yeah. And I want, or I love dressing people. And I love that look where someone realizes that they're beautiful. You know, like. There, we don't get that. Um, we just get her being like, I love to do small talk <laughs> and come back into the office, everyone. Don't work from home. Uh, and <laughs> I think Robert, as much as I love our boy Nick, straight gay icon, um, I, th I think he's annoying. Yeah, I think he's just annoying. like, he's just privileged, and the movie doesn't do enough. Like, he doesn't say Gwen should be king. He's right. not on. It's not like at the first, he's like, I don't want to be king. Gwen should be king. And I should like party with my bros or like do my side hobby, hobby of helping underrepresented horses or like it could be like whatever <laughs> thing. Represented <he's>, horses. <laughs> whatever yeah. like rich boy. It could be a dumb rich boy party thing. But as long as there's something and like he supports yeah. his sister, but he doesn't, he still wants the throne until he decides he doesn't. And so it's the king who put get, who get makes Gwen's happy so it's like I just yeah, I don't really they have good chemistry I think but I don't really like ship them I think he is doing most of the chemistry work we said yeah. on we mentioned on Glee Aggressive that it's like like, it's like you could pair chord with anyone because he could just have chemistry with anything yeah. mm -hmm. and I, I feel like he's similar where it's like he'll always have chemistry he got um, it I think Billy Porter was criminally underused well, I mean, like, that's kind of like the role, though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, th I think he was like, I'm showing up as one much day. they could. Yeah. I think, I think again, like, going back to my favorite number, uh, is that <laughs> they underutilized him because they just have him strutting around, waving a wand and just like saying lines, but there's not like anything fun really for him to do. Like, it's not like, it's not as involved as it is in the other movies. So I feel yeah. like, because what, like yeah. Helena Bonham Carter plays the fairy godmother in the 2015 one, right? Yeah. She gets a lot of cool stuff to do, I'm sure. I Probably mean, Whitney, a lot more than this. Whitney Houston, Whitney Houston, Houston pretty Houston. iconic. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, they didn't really give him a lot. I thought he looked cool, but yeah. I don't he know. Says work. Cheap. And as a gay, fab. I love, I love when my fab G's say work. Um, work, yes. <laughs> yes, auntie, yeah. Right, uh, giving everything that you would expect out of fab G. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do we think? I think we got too much of the king and queen. Too much of everyone else. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 And I, what do we think of her as a wicked stepmother, as Adele, Dazeem? comparing to her especially to Bernadette Peters and animated one voiced by Eleanor Audley Lady Tremaine she's not I, I like it I mean I like it so it's she's a little she's sympathetic a little bit more definitely more than either of the ones but it means she's less menacing and so we have less reason to root for Cinderella yeah and again, it makes Pierce Brosnan is the real villain, the king, King Rowan mm -hmm. or whatever, you know? So it's like, and he just has one talking to his wife and is like, I guess I'll be better. Yeah, I think all of their villains fall flat. Yeah. Because I think 
I, there's I don't no, know. They're there's, flat and she has nothing. Yeah. And there's like, no girl, come give up us ins. literally nothing. Girl, there's give no us nothing. There's no comeuppance because like like her stepsister is not or her stepmother isn't nice to her. But I don't understand so much of what their dynamic really is. Or I don't find it as dire, I guess. Yeah, like probably you- I think I'm 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 wanting too much from the Cinderella story. I don't know. Yeah. Like I'm like, oh, I want her to be so abused. Like, is is that really what I want? Or do I just want like a clearer delineation between like she's I don't think bad. that you're asking for too much. Yeah. I'll, okay, I'll good. There. Thank you. Yeah. I yeah, think the no. moment, the moment of triumph over them, like in the Brandy one, it's just they're locked out of the wedding. I mean, it's yeah. pretty small in the Disney one too. They're just the stepmother's just like, <gasps> and yeah. you're like in your face, bitch. You know, like that's you get that feeling because she's so awful, there. and yeah. it's like you don't like get because you don't hate her viscerally, and mm-hmm. she also gets forgiven, which yeah. I you know, but it's yeah, it's just there's no teeth to this movie. Yeah. It's very like soft. It's like a sanitized. Sanitized. And so I guess that's our big question. Was that your fantasy? No. I I think I started this episode being like, you know what? I think maybe I just wanted to rewrite it. No, I don't think I liked it actually. Because it then occurred to me that there's so little Cinderella in this movie. And yeah. that's not good. In in a way, because like I know I talk so much about how like this Cinderella is very much very involved with the mice and the animals, but there's still so much depth to her and the terrible relationship she has with her family that like this movie completely lacks. So yeah, I just know. Um, yeah, I don't think no, this is not my fantasy. Uh also, not to be rude, could have been an email. I could have told you that. <laughs> <in> any- <laughs> um, but uh, no, I think that we had a much more introspective conversation than I think this movie is owed. Yes. Um, <laughs> I think that, you know, it, it is really fascinating. Something that I wouldn't have ever considered without this conversation is that, yeah, like, it is truly mind-boggling that they expect the audience member to already be familiar, like, deeply familiar with the Cinderella story, which I guess, like, it is a very simple story to begin with. You know, listening to that 15-minute uh, YouTube video today, I was like, okay, got it. However, it does take away some of the autonomy of discovering it in you know different adaptations of the story i.e this one and the fact that we don't like get some of these like key things in the movie because it's like oh well the audience already is like keyed in is odd that it's not odd but also just like i don't know just like deeply bizarre to me that like you would just like remove key aspects of the story I yeah I, I also feel like delirious uh, like <laughs> talking about it for this, <laughs> long. for this long yeah I'm just gonna say no this is not my fantasy I think it fundamentally misunderstands Cinderella why it resonates with people why we retell it what it means to us whether you say it's a story about kindness or even if it's just a story about abuse if it's a story about an underdog you know and like triumphing over that you don't get this movie doesn't get scratch that itch uh, mm. It very half-heartedly hits some plot points with some other stuff. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we could have, yes, did we, it could have been an email. But <laughs> it was, it is, you know, it, part of the fun of the series is kind of exploring how the same story oh, can yeah. be shaped differently, right? Um, Gleek of the Week, where can, our, where can our listeners find you and what is your mission? Oh, my mission? On this earth before Camilla Cabello <laughs> destroys it. Right, right. <laughs> Time is running short. Camilla's mission is much more expedited, expedited than mine. Um, I, my name is Andrew McGuire. Hello, hi. Um, and I host a podcast called Gleek the Week, 
podcast, surprisingly ugly podcast. And uh, the mission of that podcast uh, is to um, find the best song on Glee. And we had y'all on for round one of the Glacket, um, as we refer to the Glee song bracket. We are, um, <clears throat> have went through every single song already on the Hitbox show Glee. And so we are around two of the Glacket, meaning all of these songs have been vetted and um, have at least won a singular competition so far. And so stakes are a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really fun time. There's a different guest every week. Uh, we recently had on um, Heather Morris, who played um, Brittany S. Pierce, and it was iconic. And I screamed, and I and I cried, and I threw up, and pissed mm -hmm. everywhere. And I um, am also excited to announce next week's episode, as of this recording, is with Lauren Potter, who played <laughs> Becky Jackson. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh! We recorded the episode on Monday, and truly. Um, yeah. I think maybe my favorite episode. Like literally, yeah. I actually like cried. Um, like just a wonderful human being oh. um who loves the damn show glee. And yeah, so that. you know what? When you when you link when you link me up with someone else <laughs> who loves the, the show glee, then we we do be chatting and we did chat <laughs> with Lauren. And so um anyway, you can find uh Gleek the Week podcast. Um I I, I just went on a full wow diatribe about the entire podcast a needed so one it was needed. <laughs> yeah i'm like needs. if i'm gonna be on a podcast i need to talk about glee for at least two minutes <laughs> um, yes so uh yeah you can go on to spotify or apple podcast gleek of the week um you'll find it also on instagram and i think the twitter is the same uh, the, um tiktok's the same at gleek of the week pod um, go follow us and uh, yeah it's a good time yeah. yay well yeah we can't wait to be on for round two of the Glacket so oh my gosh. just give us that call send us that email You know, <laughs> it, it, it will be an email yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alright so you can follow Not My Fantasy on Instagram and TikTok at Not My Fantasy Pod and if you are on uh, iTunes, give us that five-star review. Let us know what you love about the podcast. And if you're on YouTube, hi, hello, you can. Smash that like button. Smash wow. the like button, hit subscribe, and also hit that notification bell to get notified whenever we drop a new video. So you can see me snort the water as I'm <laughs> Yeah. I <and> just hear <laughs> it. I yeah. can't wait to edit that. And just Oh, that's going to be so good. <laughs> Uh, yeah uh tune in next week uh for we have i don't want to spoil the guest because it's they they want they say yes we want to do this we're just picking a time so just yeah. you know i don't want to spoil but uh hopefully a returning guest and we will be talking about actually one of my favorite adaptation of cinderella the 2015 lily james richard madden kate blanchett little number Oh, um, Lily James died tonight. <laughs> Lily James died. So yeah. this will be in memoriam. Uh, we will be singing I Will Remember You. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, conti and continuing on, excuse me, I still have water in my nose. Uh, continuing on our Cinderella journey. So, Andrew, thank you so much. Thank oh you. Oh my gosh. The, I, do people say the pleasure is all mine? I, I don't know what that means, but I <laughs> I I really I uh, pleasure is all mine. I'm actually thinking about what that actually means. And yes, I, I really did have the best time chatting with y'all again and can't wait to do it again. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right, listeners. Bye. Bye. Bye.